to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights have made their way across the country to take on the Fresno State Bulldogs. It was a scorching hot afternoon. Sun is setting down. The lights are on. College football under the lights here for Fresno State, a season of expectation, and it starts with their quarterback, one of the very best in all of college football, a record-setting season for Carr last year. Most passing yards in the history of the Mountain West Conference. Carr and his Bulldogs at home here to start their season against Rutgers. And hi, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast booth here at Bulldog Stadium. Dave Fleming alongside Coach Mike Bellotti. And, Mike, we do have a really good matchup. Both these teams shared their conference title last year. Even bigger expectations here in 2013. For the Fresno State Bulldogs, it starts with Derek Carr, and it starts with all the weapons he has on offense. He loved the spread for the ability to pass the football. He put up Heisman-like numbers. But he had great support, I'll tell you what. Devontae Adams, Isaiah Burst, Josh Harper, Marcel Jensen. He could throw to any of those guys. He going, they're all coming back. They're all healthy, ready to go. Yeah, this is a Fresno State team that averaged 550 yards a game at home last year. They think they can do even better this season. But don't feel sorry for Rutgers because they've got some weapons of their own, a very experienced quarterback and a big-time wideout talent. Veteran Gary Nova has matured into the position, did a great job, did not turn the ball over very much last year, but he's got a big target. And when I say big, Brandon Coleman, 6'6", 220, and literally every time he touches the ball, goes about 21 yards with it and a lot of touchdowns. So you got to keep an eye on him tonight, today, I mean, because the Fresno State defense certainly will. Well, Brandon Coleman... Ten touchdown receptions last year. He's getting pumped up. We've seen an excellent day and night of college football already. And sort of the nightcap on things here in Fresno. You can see the players are hot. And that will be a factor here in this game tonight. And thankfully, the sun has said it was over 100 degrees here in the Central Valley earlier this afternoon. And it must be still above 90 as we are still just a couple minutes away from kick time. The captains are meeting at midfield with the officiating crew and so that means we're getting ready for kickoff now there's Tim DeRuiter second year head coach Mike for this Fresno State program and what a job he did last year well both of these coaches you know they had the exact same record nine and four they won both the they both won a share of the conference crown both were named coach of the year both unfortunately lost their bowl games which put a little sad taste in the mouth but makes that team work harder in the offseason I think tonight too don't be confused the visiting team looks like the home team the home team looks like the visiting kids Fresno State, it's a whiteout. They're all in white. So if I get screwed up sometimes, I may because I'm used to seeing the home team in the dark color. Is that a reminder for our viewers or for the two that's of me. us? That's for me. Yeah. That's for me. There's Kyle Flood, second year coach. Now, Kyle inherited the situation at Rutgers where the program had really been on an upswing, but some thought maybe a drop off in his first year as a head coach last year. That was not the case. Yeah, no drop off whatsoever. I mean, he his team led their conference in scoring defense. They're they're facing a Fresno State team that led their conference in scoring offense. So we've got a great one tonight. And both of those coaches did a tremendous job in their first year, taking over for really somewhat legends at each school. Rutgers has won the coin toss, and they have elected to defer to the second half. So that means Fresno State will be the receiving team. And there are the Bulldogs in their whiteout uniform. First time they've ever worn those at home, and the white helmets are new. Fresno State, they're doing what a lot of teams around college football are doing. They're going with all kinds of different uniform combinations this year. Last season at home, the Bulldogs were just about unstoppable. 6-0 record. Look at that, almost 50 points a game, 550 yards of offense per game. That's the challenge for the Scarlet Knights here this evening. They lit it up last year. They threw the ball all over the park. One of the unintended consequences of spreading out and having a great passing game, they're hoping it will help their running game this year. They don't have Robbie Rouse. They're looking for a couple of younger guys at the running back position to step up, and hopefully by spreading the defense, they'll create more opportunities to get speed in space. Now the kickoff man, Nick Marsh, wearing number 99, coming back to California. He kicked for Utah last year. He's a fifth year transfer and he's a native of California one of the very few on this Rutgers roster so he'll kick deep Dylan Root number 11 is the deep return man for the Bulldogs so the college football season for these two teams is underway now and a low line drive kind of kickoff Root takes it just outside the goal line 
gets to the 20 and gets tripped up across the 25. That's where the Bulldogs will start with their first offensive possession of 2013. And there he is, Derek Carr, fifth-year senior, record-setting quarterback for Fresno State. Yeah, he is so good, over 4,000 yards. The thing that really impressed me, though, 37 touchdowns versus seven interceptions. He's a student of the game. He knows what to do. He watches a ton of film. Obviously, he's tried to emulate his big brother, but he is an awesome quarterback in his own right. Yeah, he recognizes the last name, David Carr, his older brother. More than a decade ago was the quarterback here at Fresno State, and a quick hit pass to the left side for a nice gain on first down, breaking tackles. So a gain of about eight yards. Isaiah Burst with the first catch for Fresno State. This is vintage Fresno State. It's the long handoff. It's really a form of their running game. And they will play up-tempo offense with that spread style. Carr will spend most of the game in the shotgun. Another pass complete. No, dropped on the left side by Burst. So it's going to be third down and short. They also believe that their receivers give them a chance to run the ball after the catch. It's very important that the receivers in this style of offense can catch but also can block for their partner. And we're already getting a flavor of how fast this offense is moving. A fake handoff and then wide open. They're going back to that left side for the first down. Isaiah Burst, the senior from Modesto, he's been busy on this first series. Yeah, and they, they love him. Every one of these guys is a threat to go all the way. As soon as the defense starts overplaying the underneath pass, they're going to pump and go deep. Seven yard gain first down across the 40 the Bulldogs with the ball first here tonight good protection for Carr and he'll just dump it short pass caught and across midfield taking it into Rutgers territory Josh Kizada, the transfer from BYU, getting the start at running back for Fresno State. That's a gain of 11. Rutgers stuck in the middle trying to decide whether to bring pressure and single up on the receivers or have the backers carry the routes down the field, which leads to the little dink passes to the running back open. Those three receivers stacked up on the right side. Kizada with Carr, who changes the play call. And now gets the snap off and hands it off. The first running play and a big hole up the middle. Inside the 35 and nearly down to the 30. Quezada with a big run for Fresno State, a gain of 17. And a coach on the field going, get going, get going, faster, faster. They, they want warp speed here. Big time. Now they talked to us about that before the game. They think they can play a lot faster even than they did last year. First down, Carr, a lob pass, what touch over the middle. And the pass is caught inside the 15. We've talked about those tight ends are also great receivers. They'll flex them out. They put such stress on the defense because it takes the defensive coordinator out of the game. Marcel Jensen with his first reception. He was a little banged up, but he stays in the game just outside the 10. So not quite first and goal. They can get a first down at about the 2. Fake handoff and Carr to the left side, turning it upfield, breaking a tackle and pushed out of bounds. Devontae Adams, the sophomore who is coming off a huge year last year. Way too big a cushion right there. I'll tell you what, if they get that type of cushion, they're going to throw him the ball, what we call smoke right now, off the get-go. That's you got to come down closer down there the goal line. Well, Fresno State is just moving right down the field as this game gets started. Second down and one for Derek Carr and company. A little tighter formation, and they do give the ball to Quezada running up the middle. And he's tackled near the first down mark, but he may well be short. Darius Hamilton for Rutgers with the tackle. And a lot of times, it's a just simple count system. If they have more people in coverage than in the box, they're going to run the ball. If the more people in the box, they're going to throw it outside where they have one-on-one -on -one or even one-on-none sometimes in terms of the DB being way off. Number 22, Malik Meissenheimer is sort of the power back. He comes in, so they're two backs. Behind Carr in the shotgun on third and very short. And they will fake the handoff. A lob play over the top. Adams there, but the pass was a little high, and he could not come down with it. It's fourth down. Typical type of route that you see down here. That was what we call a rub route. Not a pick route, because picks are illegal. But the receiver ran in, ran through the DB, creating the opportunity. Just throwing a little bit too high. Yeah, Big down now, fourth down. Waters was back there in coverage, but a better pass, and that was a touchdown. They're going for it on fourth down. They don't kick a lot of field goals at Fresno State. The handoff, Quezada. He's got the first down. He's got the touchdown. So the Bulldogs on their first possession of 2013 go right down the field and punch it in on fourth down and one.
That was an impressive first drive. That's the way you like to start the season. A nice mix of run and pass and enough run to keep the defense honest. Also, the tempo really slowed down or weakened the Rutgers defense. They weren't ready for that play at the end. When you have to face a running play, you've got to hit, strike, and stay low. You're used to trying to get the pass rush going. Very, very difficult. And Colin McGuire with the extra point up and good. Jensen, the tight end, had a big play. They mixed it up, got all their weapons involved, and then Kizada on fourth down with the touchdown, Bulldogs lead 7-0. A whiteout tonight here in Fresno, California, and these home fans watch their Bulldogs take the opening kickoff, go 10 plays, 74 yards right down the field and score the first touchdown of the year. Fresno State has the 7-0 lead over Rutgers. Uh, there's the drive stats. David Carr, or Derek Carr, rather, 5 of 7 for 54 yards four different receivers caught passes. He's an equal opportunity quarterback. He spreads the ball around various receivers, kept them honest with the running game. They're outpacing Rutgers right now. Rutgers wants to be a pressure defense, but Fresno State keeps spreading them out. They don't get a chance to apply pressure. Colin McGuire will kick off deep. True freshman, place kicker for this Fresno State team, making his college debut tonight. we got lots of young players on the field here at Bulldog Stadium. Jeremy Deering is the deep man for Rutgers, but instead it's going to be Janarian Grant who takes it and brings it across the 15 to the 20, and he might go. Grant to midfield. He's got blazing speed, and Rutgers has the answer. A special teams touchdown. And that's the true freshman who is also one of the best dancers on the team. I'll bet he'll dance a little bit on the sideline. Yeah, you can't do it in college football, can't do the end zone dance. You know he's dying to do it. A 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. You see, just sets up so well here. Gets the key blocks right there, kick out. He splits it, and then he's off to the races. The safeties are not in position. And this is just a speed thing now, and he's got it. He's got the answer. Run through the end zone. Well, Kyle Flood told us that this kid has special, special ability. Now Rutgers in a little different look here and showing like they might go for two. Instead, they'll set up for the conventional extra point try. Everybody does sort of the swinging gate look now to make the defenses have to prepare for it. Kyle Federico, sophomore, place kicker. The kick is up, and it's good. So Rutgers didn't even have to get the ball on offense, and they've tied the game. So that was an impressive start for the true freshman, Janarian Grant. Our third member of our broadcast crew tonight here from Fresno is Lewis Johnson. Lewis, down on the sidelines. Good afternoon. Good evening, Lewis. Car. It was a tumultuous offseason, preseason as a matter of fact. Three days into camp, he experienced the joy of welcoming his first son into the world. And then a few moments after that, it was sheer terror as little Dallas Carr had to be rushed into surgery to repair an intestines that was not operating right. Well, after a second surgery and 23 days later, the little guy is safely back at home. And Derek Carr, beloved by his team, wants to be such a leader back here apologizing to his team for having to miss a couple of days of practice. He has, as you know, guys, as we talked earlier, been to from three some bumps in his own career so far but credits his wife and his faith for getting him straight clearly his new son Dallas has had a big effect on him but everybody's okay as well as Derek Carr leading his team down the field for that first score yeah thanks Lewis really an incredible story actually how much time he had to miss during the fall camp and how scary that was and we're just thrilled that his brand new son is doing okay and is back home it's a great story and I and you know you just your heart goes out to him and he's handled it like a man I know talked about it. he just broke down and cried in his coach's arms and you know that's because uh, he won he was worried about his son he also really felt he's letting his teammates down and you love a young man like that I think it's safe to say he was prepared for the start of the year though based on his first drive Derek Carr looked fantastic but so did Rutgers on special teams these are two standout special teams units both these programs pride themselves on great special teams play and it's Rutgers who gets the big play on the special teams. Now Dylan Root will try to answer, and he gets tackled at the 15. Great coverage there by the Scarlet Knights. 
momentum is always a strange thing. You know, you thought Rutgers was almost down and out after that first drive. They come back and score in one play, and then they come back, and now their defense is fired up. The coverage team goes down and makes a great stop. Well, Mike, we talked a lot about Derek Carr. One of his impact talents on the outside, the sophomore receiver, Devontae Adams. Yeah, and, and Jamal Merrill, Morrell, excuse me, is the guy in the middle for Rutgers. He's going to try and stop some of those intermediate routes, tackle, and occasionally apply pressure to the quarterback. Jamal's twin brother, Jameel Morrell, another one of their top defensive players, he is not playing tonight, and that's big news for the Scarlet Knights. They will miss him, maybe their best pure pass rusher. They, they're going to really miss him off the edge. You have to anchor the edge against this offense. Hand off to Martez Waller in the game now, and no running room that time on the first down carry. In fact, a loss of a yard. I don't know that either one of these backs have the speed to really run wide initially. That's a play more for the, the quick back. These backs, to me, look more vertical. Give them the ball going straight ahead. Let them make the hard yards inside. Uh, Waller will get a lot of carries. Kazada, we saw him on the field on the first possession for the Bulldogs. And a penalty flag is thrown. The Bulldogs have a free play, but the pass incomplete intended for Isaiah Burst. I believe that Rutgers jumped off sides. I think you're right, and that'll give him a free play. All Second down. Tracy Jones is the head referee. We used to say this was a Big East crew. Of course, now the AAC Rutgers spending one and only one year. Co-Big East champions last year. The AAC this year, they'll move to the Big Ten for 2014. One and done after this. Well, that's the officiating crew tonight here in Fresno. So it's second down and six. Derek Carr in the shotgun. A low snap, but he gets the handoff off. And a good open field tackle there after a gain of maybe four yards for Martez Waller. Sets up a third down. Very manageable third and two and a half. The defense doesn't know what the offense. They can run the ball. They can throw the quick pass. If you don't cover the receivers, they're going to throw it to somebody uncovered. You look down here at the bottom of the screen, middle receiver, he's off enough. If they press, he's going to run the ball. Carr looking right, he'll throw short right, but the pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Excellent play there on the defensive line for Rutgers. That was David Maluski who knocked it down. It's fourth and two. And that's one of the best coverage principles you have on the quick passes. When the quarterback doesn't drop, you run directly at him in the line of path of the ball and keep your arms up. Great job in knocking the ball down. Well, you mentioned the special teams prowess for these two teams as Fresno State will punt for the first time. These two teams, the most blocked kicks, that's place kicks and punts in college football going back now five years. Yeah, numbers one and two, pretty impressive. And I saw Pat Hill's teams, there's no question about it. I think Rutgers has sort of switched. They've said tonight that they are more of a return team because they think they have great returners, and obviously they did on the kickoff. Fair catch. Rutgers has the ball when we come back. A 7-7 first quarter score. A whiteout night for the fans of the Fresno State Bulldogs, and a nice crowd has gathered at Bulldog Stadium. A lot of excitement in the first four-plus minutes of this one. 7-7 seven to seven the score. Fresno State with a long drive to start the game. Rutgers with a special teams touchdown to answer. Dave Fleming, Mike Bellotti here at Bulldog Stadium. And Mike, because of that, Rutgers has not yet had an offensive possession. They will for the first time here. No, first time we get a chance to see the Rutgers offense led by Gary Nova. Gary's a very talented young man that's started on off for three years now for them and he passed for almost 2700 yards last year but the coaches give him the most compliment in that he's a teacher now on the field the players respect him enough they will listen to him when he coaches them now if you're a Rutgers fan don't recognize Gary switched numbers in the offseason went from 15 to 10 and before Rutgers runs its first play ball start offense number 74 five yard penalty and that, Mike, could be a story here tonight. Yeah, that's Keith Lumpkin, and he's a big son of a gun, 6'8", but he can't hear any better than the rest of us sometime. And you're trying, you're excited. Young guy starting his first game at left tackle position. Oh, my gosh, that's a scary thing. Yeah, a redshirt freshman who has never played a down in college football. And he has committed a penalty now, false start penalty for <laughs> He's the got new his left name. tackle. He's got his name on the loudspeaker. Not the way he wants to do it. Now a fumbled exchange. And so things not going well for Rutgers here on their first possession of the game. They did keep possession. 
No, and that's not the way you want to do it. And sometimes, again, the center's unclear as to whether the quarterback's going to take the snap directly or the shotgun. It came up and looked like he's just trying to audible. Center and the quarterback have to get that straightened out on the exchange. So they end up losing two yards with the penalty and that loss. It's second and 17 for Nova, the 6'2 junior from Elmwood Park, New Jersey, starred at Don Bosco Prep. Maybe the, the number one high school football power in the country these last five years. He'll hand the ball off on second and long and not much running room there. The Bulldogs defense swarming to the ball. No, and you don't like to see these type of downs early in the game. Second and long, third and long, it really puts a lot of stress on your offensive line early. Savon Huggins with the carry, his first of the game, and a penalty flag was, if it was down, it was picked up. No penalty. It's going to be third down and long for Rutgers. And you have to decide as a quarterback and a coach, are you going to throw it deep to pick up the 14 or 15 yards, or are you going to throw it underneath and let him run for it? Two receivers left, one right. Nova in the shotgun on third and long. With time, he'll throw deep. He's got a man. It's caught into Fresno State territory for a first down and a big gain. And there's the big playmaker, Brandon Coleman. Surprise, surprise. they got to give him a lot of respect. He's a double move, post corner. You can see him right there, set up the DB. Great timing, great execution, nice catch, and a big gain. And that's they're going to go to him all night long if he's single covered. 28-yard completion on third and long. Brandon Coleman, a junior from Maryland, who has just blossomed into a huge star for Rutgers, one of the very best wide receivers in all of college football. And that's his first catch of the year. He'll have many more. Nova passing, and he's got another open receiver. This time inside the 30, down to about the 28. Karan Pratt, who's another talented kid on the outside for a Rutgers first down. And our impact players when Rutgers has the ball, obviously Brandon Coleman, we already talked about that key third down conversion. But on the other side, Deron Smith, the preseason defensive player of the year in the conference, 79 tackles. They're going to go head-to-head -head eventually in the course of this game. A couple of passes, one for 28 yards, one for 14, and Rutgers moving down the field. Tie game, 7-7, still the first quarter. Nova pressured, gets away from the initial rush, gets hit as he throws, and it's incomplete on the far right sideline. Great job by the quarterback. That's the maturity. Uh, break inside, somebody came untouched. He steps up, makes a move to get rid of the ball, and save the down and distance. So it's more manageable. Second and 10 is much better than second or 15 or 16 after the sack. Maybe having some communication problems there. Gary Nova now gets the play call. Nico Mata put the pressure on the fifth-year senior defensive end for Fresno State. So under center with Huggins in the backfield. They'll toss to him, and he's got nowhere to go. Tackled well behind the line of scrimmage by a group of Bulldogs. Donovan Lewis, Mata was there again, a loss of three. One of the things you're going to see all night long is that Fresno State puts a lot of indecision in the minds of the offensive line. It's a different offensive line. Four starters return, but they're in different positions. And you're not sure who's coming or who's dropping. So both on run plays and pass plays, it makes it difficult every time to figure out who is my blocking assignment. Good point. Fresno State totally changed its defensive identity last year when Tim DeRuder took over and it totally changed the results. Fresno State made a huge improvement. Third and long. Nova steps up, throws, and he overthrows his receiver. He might have had Pratt open over the middle, but it's incomplete fourth down. He had Pratt open. He wants that ball back, and that's one of the things that Gary Nova has only completed 57% of his passes last year. The thing that they wanted more from him this year was consistency and being able to hit the guys when you're not under pressure and when they are wide open. Well, Kyle Federico is going to come out and attempt a very long field goal try, 48 yards, his first attempt of the year. He's got a big leg. From the right hash, Federico's kick is on the way, curling back, and it is good. Impressive. 48-yard field goal. Yeah, very low trajectory, which is in danger of being blocked, but obviously a big leg, kicked that one low. I don't know about the wind on the field, but that's a great save. That's a huge confidence builder for a young kicker. So the field goal try is good. Rutgers has settled down in this game, and in fact, Kyle Flood and his group, they've taken a 10-7 lead. Here at Fresno State, first quarter action, Rutgers with a 10-7 lead. The Bulldogs did get off to a very quick start in this game. Rutgers has given a nice answer, Mike. 
Fresno State blazing start just marched right down the field. A couple of key runs by Josh Tizada with the spark plugs to get him in the end zone. Here's she a power run to get in there behind a great offensive line block down there. But it didn't take long for Janarian Grant and Rutgers to answer. The first touch of a young man's college career, he goes 100 plus yards. Nobody touches him. Great speed. Fun memories for that young man. And then Rutgers forced a three and out from the Bulldogs. Got the ball back. Couple big pass plays. Got into long field goal range. Kicked a 48 yarder. So the Scarlet Knights who've come all the way across the country to the heat of the Central Valley. And in the first quarter they've got a 10-7 lead. Winning it on special teams. Well special teams out there again. Federico. Not the kickoff man. They use Nick Marsh the punter. And very deep Dylan Root from the end zone. He's going to bring it out. Root to the 15-20, but no more room. Good coverage again for the Scarlet Knights. So Fresno State getting the ball back. Florida Atlantic and Miami. That comes up tomorrow, Friday, 8 Eastern. Another matchup. And this opening weekend for the college football season on ESPNU. The Hurricanes, who are stacked with offensive weapons themselves. Al Golden, Stephen Morris at quarterback. But Al Golden's done a great job. And they are supposed to be one of the surprise teams, not just in their league, but in the nation this year. Well, Florida Atlantic there and Miami. We'll meet on Friday, 8 Eastern ESPNU. Pass play, left sideline, and the pass is dropped. That was the star wideout, Devontae Adams. Maybe saw that defensive player coming over, and he could not hang on to the ball. You know, I think I think he actually was thinking about making a cut before he caught the ball. Second day. So Adams, who had 102 receptions as a freshman last year and 14 touchdowns. Here's a quick pass, left side burst, turns it upfield across the 25 and tackled short up the 30, short up the first down mark. The whole idea is if they commit as many people as you have out there, you run the ball or toss it over the top. If they don't, if they're back off with only two on three, you're going to throw the quick screen outside. You've got a numbers advantage. Quezada in the backfield, it's third and two. Carr, a little pump fake, looking, and he finds a man. The catch is made, but I don't know if they got the first down. Right near the 30, it's going to depend on the spot. Steve Longa with a good open field tackle, the middle linebacker. Steve Longa, young player, but that's a huge uh, stop right there because I think it's going to be fourth down, which puts a little question mark in the minds of the faithful here. Yeah, you're right, though. They have spotted the ball short, and the punt team is coming out. Oh, what a tackle by Steve Longa to save a first down. Derek Carr and his teammates have to come back to the sideline. Garrett Swanson, the punter, comes out. You always have to be aware of a fake no matter where you are when it's this short a distance. And Janarian Grant, who we saw spectacular on the kickoff return, will make the fair catch signal and make that catch at about the 28-yard line of Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights in the first quarter lead Fresno State 10-7. Back here at Bulldog Stadium at Fresno State, Dave Fleming, Mike Bellotti with you. First quarter, just over six minutes still to play. Rutgers has a 10-7 lead over the homestanding Bulldogs. Gary Nova, the quarterback, junior, has got a lot of experience. And Mike Kyle Flood thinks Gary Nova is going to be a lot better even this year. Well, that statement that he made, we talked earlier about the fact that his ability to coach the other players. And for young quarterbacks, that's not always easy because, first of all, you're one of their teammates. But he, a couple years ago, was splitting time with Chase Dodd. He beat him out. They saw a great potential for him and he's lived up to that potential the players trust him and they'll listen to him when he talks yeah coach flood telling us about how he really sees that happening these days first and ten for Rutgers Nova's going to be under center and I formation back to pass Nova looking to the left side and a pass caught nice catch there the quick tackle but a good gain for the Scarlet Knights, and that once again is Brandon Coleman. Brandon Coleman is such a big target. That's 6'6", and he's got range, which means you can throw it anywhere in a five-yard area. He's going to get to the ball. That's such a weapon at wide receiver. So just enough for a first down. They spotted him ahead 11 yards. Rutgers first down. Second catch already 39 yards receiving for Brandon Coleman, who is one of the best wide receivers in college football. 
Handoff on first down. Huggins hits the hole hard, but there wasn't a whole lot of running room. A gain of three yards on first down. The other thing you can watch, they're putting Coleman into the short side, and they're seeing whether he has single coverage or not. If he has single coverage, they probably have a way to get him the ball. If he gets double covered, he opens up the field for the rest, either the running game with the backs or for the other receivers to be single covered. Rutgers really feels like this season they need to improve that run game. They had a running back who has drafted Juwan Jamison into the NFL, but their run game was not that productive last year, despite all the success they had. They'll fake the handoff. Nova rolling right, throws back middle, and the pass is caught, turned upfield. It's a first down and into Fresno State territory. The tight end, Paul Carrizolo, with the catch and the first down. Yeah, good mobility here to, to get outside. You can sort of see this. The play fake comes off. Does a nice job with the fake. And then it's the second running into the flat. It's not the initial fullback. It's the tight end who comes there. Great job of throwing on the run. People don't understand how difficult it is to throw running full speed laterally from the line of scrimmage. And that was a pretty good catch by Carrizola. Modest numbers last year. They think he can be a little bit bigger part of the offense this season under center first and 10 Nova with time again down the sideline had a man open there but the pass was a little inaccurate intended for Coleman double move route and again Coleman getting single coverage they're going to keep going there another second example of Gary Noah having a guy wide open and not quite putting the ball on the money and we saw those stats you talked about it already the, the completion percentage the interceptions those are where they want to see improvement from their junior quarterback he had one really bad game. The reality is they did not turn the ball over very much at all last year. Tight end Carrizola goes in motion to the right side. Sort of an offset eye formation on second and ten. They will hand the ball off, running right, and tackled from behind there. Huggins pulled down after a short game. Great job by Kyrie Wilson. Came from the inside and chased that play down. Had had the running back gotten outside, there was not a defender there to stop him. Wilson, a guy who beat out some more experienced players. He is just a sophomore, and they think he's got a chance to be a big-time linebacker. They love his length and his athleticism. They said, we've got guys now that can really, really run inside, and we had veteran guys we were counting on. Another area Rutgers thinks they could be better. Third down conversions. This one third and seven. Inside Fresno State territory, they need to get down to about the 37. From the shotgun, pressure picked up nicely, but the throw is incomplete. Fourth down. I'll tell you what I see right now. Rutgers is doing a really a pretty good job in terms of pass protection, but Gary Nova has not been as accurate as he needs to be given that type of protection. So it's fourth down, and that means the punt team comes out for Rutgers. Nick Marsh will try to pin Fresno State deep. 3.47 to go, first quarter. Isaiah Burse is deep to receive for the Bulldogs. And maybe just in a fair catch position, we'll see. Fresno State puts a lot of pressure on the punt game. He gets it off with some pressure and a fair catch called for and made by Burse at the 12. Let's check in once again on the sidelines with Lewis Johnson. Hey, Dave, look across the field from where you guys are. You'll see Jamil Murrell, uh missing at defensive end spot for Rutgers. Uh, sometimes he's looking like a coach on staff, sometimes like a caged dog with his eyes saying that he wants to be in this game. Out with a foot problem, not quite sure when he'll be able to return. But we did have a quick chance to chat about his brother, Jamal, who got married in that interesting story of asking a coach if they could have a preseason game off. And Jamil said he is so proud of his brother for stepping up and being the man that he is and the hard work of being a husband has begun, but right now Jamil wishing he could be out there on the field with his brother. Yeah, the big loss for Rutgers. Jamil not playing. Jamal is out there. Two of their best defensive players. And very close on this Rutgers team. Derek Carr throws and the ball off the hands of Devontae Adams. Incomplete. Well, Jamal Morrell was married. It was only just a few weeks ago. They had a scrimmage. The brothers asked their head coach, hey, can we miss the scrimmage? This one is pretty important. And Coach Flood said, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think most coaches understand that Jamal and Jamil are captains of this team. So it's no surprise that Jamil, even though he's not playing, is on the sideline exhorting his guys to get going. Martez Waller is the running back alongside Derek Carr, the senior quarterback in the shotgun. And a quick pass to Burst, right side, turns it upfield, made one tackler miss, but not a second. So short of the 20, Longo with another tackle for the Scarlet Knights, a gain of five. And some pushing and shoving after the play. 
great job of getting to a manageable third and four or five, long four, short five, whatever you call it. The Rutgers defense is sugaring things. They're showing pressure and dropping back into coverage. They're moving their people around to confuse or try to confuse Derek Carr. He's still getting the ball out very easily. Now you can see why Burst was upset. The helmet by Jamal Morrell was just ripped off, and Burst has to come off the field for this third down play. Third and four. Carr pressure. Throws. Caught. First down. And more. 30. Almost to the 35. Devontae Adams. You're right, and those things happen. That, that You have to go out if you get your helmet, eat, unless there's a penalty called. And obviously, sometimes the officials don't see how it happens. So first down, and maybe Fresno State can get some offensive rhythm back. They just blew right down the field on their first possession of the game. Since then, it's been much more difficult. But give some of that credit to the Rutgers defense. Play fake, back to pass. And the Rutgers defense putting more pressure on Carr, who kind of throws it up for grabs, incomplete. And here comes a penalty flag. Intended for Harper, but the flag flies. Yeah, there was definite contact. You can see it in the air. The ball's in the air, and the DB were, was jostling the wide receiver. Uh, Pass it to Burns. Defense, number 24. Automatic first down. Penalty on Lou Toller, the senior defensive back. Yeah, take a look right here. You can see him, and you don't quite see it. He was pushing. The ball was in there for quite a while. You know, Carr is one of the fastest, of the, the fastest quarterbacks ever to play at Fresno State, so he'll get outside quite a bit and put a lot of stress on the defense. Yeah, not a big part of his game, but he's got it if he needs it. He can use his legs. Hand off left side, and a gang tackle by the Scarlet Knights defense, Martez Waller, for a short game. One other thing, I think that Rutgers was a little shell-shocked in that first drive. The heat, the whole thing, they are playing much better now. Uh, Fresno's not playing quite as fast or having the success that they have. Yeah, number 91, Darius Hamilton, has made an impact in this game. Second and nine for Fresno State. Near midfield, not quite to midfield, at their own 49. Final two minutes plus of this first quarter at Bulldog Stadium. Play fake, pass, caught, burst, absorbs the hit, hangs on, first down inside the 40. Lorenzo Waters put a pretty big hit on the burst with a nice catch. Burst is what you call an inside receiver. He's going to catch the ball in traffic. He's not afraid of getting hit, has great concentration. With that pass, Derek Carr just moved past his brother on the all-time yardage list at Fresno State into fourth place on a very distinguished list. There's Josh Harper, his first catch of the game. Steve Longa with another tackle for Rutgers. Notice, if you will, that the Rutgers defense is sliding out to match personnel to get a hat for a hat outside, and they're fighting off the blocks of the receivers. They're not going to be blocked by a wide receiver. Second and six for the Bulldogs. Derek Carr, not as up-tempo as we saw at the very beginning of the game. They do vary their offensive tempo. Changing the play call, gets the snap off in plenty of time. Handoff Waller, tackled short of the first down by a couple of yards. Obviously, he liked what he saw inside with the matchup. They had three on three to the outside. That signal, that little whatever it is with the arms, is telling them he's changing the play. They're going to run it. They felt like they had a matchup on that left side they liked. A second time already, Isaiah Burst's helmet has come off, so he's got to get that addressed. They need him on the field, these third down plays. He's one of their critical players. It also has allowed Rutgers, they substituted six guys, so they can keep their people fresh. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, good point. Third and two, right about the Rutgers 30-yard line. Scarlet Knight showing some pressure on defense. We'll see if they actually bring the pressure. The handoff up the middle. Waller's got room. He's got the first down and much more inside the 15. Deering saved the touchdown with a tackle, but a 17-yard gain. And they were bringing pressure, but sometimes when you're angling or slanting, you don't cover down as tight on the gaps. And Waller just burst up there and said, I'm not going to be denied. Fresno State on the move. A pass. Caught right side, turning it upfield inside the 10. Josh Harper spins away from one tackler, then shoved out of bounds. A gain of five. The other thing you'll see as they keep going with this is the receivers, the blockers have to have patience, and the ball carrier receiver has to have patience. He's got to set up those blocks and let it work. Don't rush to judgment in terms of which way you go. Not enough numbers outside to the left. And they, have a, two. they have a wildcat in, Mike. Greg Watson 
Their backup quarterback slash wide receiver slash wildcat quarterback is going to take it himself, and he just had nowhere to go. I, I believe that the, the Rutgers defense knew that, and that's why they didn't cover outside. They knew he was going to run the ball. So a loss of three yards, and we'll have a big third down play. When we come back to Bulldog Stadium, a very entertaining first quarter. They're ready for the college football season here in Fresno. Rutgers with the 10-7 lead. Nighttime, Central Valley, California. We're at Fresno State, the Bulldogs, and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers 10 7. Rutgers has the lead, start of the second quarter. Dave Fleming, Mike Bellotti here, along with Lewis Johnson. And at the start of the second quarter, Derek Carr and his Bulldogs offense, they've got a very big third down play coming up. They've got a lot of room to throw this. They're third and eight. Uh, Ball's on about the 12. They can get a first down inside the three, but they can also throw to the back of the end zone, so it's really difficult because Rutgers has to defend the entire end zone. Interesting first quarter. Rutgers ran twice as few plays as Fresno State, and yet they've got the 10-7 lead with great special teams, a big part of that. But Fresno State threatening to go back in front. Fake handoff, sprinting left. Derek Carr angles the body, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Intercepted by Rutgers, and a good idea probably to just get down. And Ian Thomas does, the redshirt freshman, with the big pick in the end zone. Ian Thomas played him. They had an over-under route going in the corner. You'll see Derek run to his left here. He uses this a lot to move and get outside the pocket. If the ball's thrown right now quickly, he has a chance. But great play by the corner. Sloughs off the underneath route and sort of plays with Carr. Says, okay, try to throw it over me. I'm ready. Great job. Did a great job in coverage. And some of these Rutgers young guys are really looking impressive in their college football debut. We saw the, the dynamic touchdown return on the kickoff from Janarian Grant. And now the redshirt freshman, Thomas, with the interception. We asked Rutgers, okay, who are your best cover guys? The first name was the kid who's never played a snap. Yeah, and they, you know what? They played pretty good defense last year. A lot of these kids who played a little bit or watch, they learned something. They know what to do. Clock is moving, by the way, so they're going to have to address that. And that may be why we have a little bit of a delay. The ruling on the field is an interception. Defender tackled in the end zone for a touchback. The play is under further review. Okay, so we're going to have a review. And we're not reviewing whether the ball was intercepted. We're, I think, reviewing about the touchback. The clock also was not running during that play. But I think what's being looked at here is whether Thomas went out of the back of the end zone or whether he got down for a touchback. Do you think that's possible? Yeah, he's, yeah, the left foot there. It was that little slip. So you have a replay official upstairs. Tony Bennett listed as the replay official for this game. Kyle Flood, I think he's trying to figure out exactly what is being looked at. And I think the way that the head referee worded that, I think that's exactly what they're trying to figure out. Tracy Jones, whether the kid Thomas who intercepted the ball was tackled in the end zone for a touchback or not. See if we can get a, another look at it. If you voluntarily run out of the back of the end zone, that is a safety. So that's that may be what they're looking at. The previous play was reviewed for a clock adjustment. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes and 52 seconds. Thank you. Well, as it turns out, that was a great look there. As it turns out, he did not go out of the back of the end zone. But the whole thing was just about the clock. So they'll get the clock corrected. Eight seconds taken off. 14.52 to go in the first half. And Rutgers, off that interception, off the turnover, will have the ball back. Rutgers playing great defense and have really a different team since the first series. They've, get, they've gotten their breath. They've relaxed a little bit. They say, hey, we can do this. This was a team that was fourth in total defense in all of college football last year. Lost a lot of defensive talent to the NFL. But they feel like they've replaced it with some very talented young guys. A broken tackle and a big run left side near the first down. Pushed out of bounds. 
And it is P.J. James, Paul James with the carry, his first touch of this game and a first down Rutgers. If your edge defender doesn't set the edge of the defense, watch out. You're going to get the outside and get a lot of yards. Now Rutgers going with a little quick tempo offense. Nova in the pocket. He's going deep left sideline. And the pass is caught. 20, 10, end zone, touchdown. And it's Leonte Carew, the sophomore, with the long touchdown reception of 69 yards. They talked about Leonte as the surprise of fall camp. Just a young athlete that kept making play after play. Here he has great concentration getting the ball and then taking off. And boy, is he a happy camper. And is this crowd shell shocked right now? A big time talent. Kid who played high school football with the quarterback, Gary Nova. They're not exactly the same age, but at Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey. The extra point coming for Rutgers. The Bulldogs are stunned, I think. And the kick is up, and it is good. 17 to 7. That's the Rutgers lead, and another big play for the Scarlet Knights. This time in the pass game. This time the young guy, Leonte Carew. He just blew right by the defense. 17-7, Scarlet Knights. Else on ESPN, and also live on Watch ESPN. And Derek Carr. Some of the matchups on Saturday night, A.J. McCarron of Alabama, Casey Pawhall of TCU, and we'll see if he actually does start that game for the Horn Frogs, but the best touchdown-interception ratios in the country career-wise of any quarterbacks, those two, and the Fresno State quarterback here tonight. Great choices at quarterback. They could all play for me, I'll tell you that much. But Rutgers is the team after watching Fresno State go right down the field on the first possession of the game and take a 7-0 lead. Rutgers now up 17-7. Nick Marsh kicking off deep and way back in the end zone. And it'll be a touchback as Fresno State will start. But first, another look at that touchdown, Mike. This is a great throw. L.J. Jones, the corner on that side, has eyes on both receivers. And as such, he doesn't realize the speed of Carew. And he just gets out past him. He loses sight of the receiver. One of the things you have to do as a DB is stay deep as the deepest, wide as the widest. Failed in that attempt. Well, and Leonte Carew and several of his young teammates are opening eyes here in the opener for Rutgers because the kids getting a chance to play with all that talent moving on to the NFL, and the kids are playing real well here tonight. The coaches sound pretty excited about some of those young receivers, so it's no surprise. The spread offense for Fresno State. Three receivers left, one right. Carr will hand it off, and... A carry for a gain of a yard, maybe two, with some forward pro progress. One thing Rutgers is doing is containing the big plays, not allowing the big break plays. Excuse me. Noah's averaging 26.6 yards per completion. Carr only 8.8. .8. Great job by Rutgers defense. Kizada, the BYU transfer, back in the game. He had that short carry. So it's second and nine, and they'll give it to him again. The hole closed up pretty quickly. Rutgers swarm into the ball on defense. Not quite a manageable third down. You'd like it to be third and four less. Third and six means you got to throw the ball down the field a little bit. They've been running the ball. Look for some type of seams, internal seams, that where you get this type of first down. Darrell Stevenson was in on that tackle. He goes to the sideline. Third and six for the Bulldogs. Carr in the pocket, throws middle. A flag is thrown, and the ball was caught. Man, did he put some zip on that pass. Josh Harper with the reception. We'll see what the penalty flag is for. Well, we nearly got the call now, a little conference. Chop block, it looks like. Yeah. And that's a combination like high, low on alignment. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense number 56. After distance to the goal. Third down. Well, what a big penalty that is against Fresno State. Yeah, that takes away a completion for the first down. And that happens often on the quick passing game when they're trying to get the hands of the defensive lineman down so they can't block the pass. And somebody's engaged and a guy goes low, that becomes a chop block. Penalty on Lars Bramer, the fifth-year senior center for the Bulldogs. Explanation was given to Tim DeRuder, the head coach for Fresno State. So third and very long, third and about 20 coming up for the Bulldogs. Back inside their own 15. It would have been a first down. First thing concern is how do you protect for something this long? 
Rushing just three. Carr's got time, but they had good coverage, so he dumps it off short, and they'll come up way short of the first down. Drop back, make him throw it, tackle him inbounds underneath the first down. That's defensive philosophy 101. So Harper with the catch, but they needed 20 and did not get anywhere close to that. They got about five. So fourth down coming up. And the Bulldogs will send Garrett Swanson, the sophomore punter, back to punt. So far, it's been the big plays of Rutgers, and then they're improving defense over the course of this game. Yeah, Rutgers forces another punt here. Fresno State looked unstoppable, nearly a block. Fair catch signaled for, and Janarian Grant holds on right around the Rutgers 40 yard line. So, timeout here at Bulldog Stadium 17 7. That's the Rutgers lead. So that's a pretty impressive score. Towson with that win, 33-18 over a team that's in the AAC with Rutgers. Rutgers looking a little better here on the road at Fresno State, leading 17-7. And, uh, Mike, I think the defensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, he's got some thinking to do. Well, he's trying to figure out, get this game, but then will my baby sleep tonight? <laughs> or will I, will I get to see her? I don't yeah, know. Nick Toth, who's a young guy, second-year defensive coordinator here at Fresno, and a brand-new dad as in in like 24 hours ago but here he is on the sideline he took a couple hours to go to the hospital and be with his wife now on the sideline but Rutgers been moving the ball in this first half still 12 26 to go until halftime 10 point lead for the Scarlet Knights and a play fake they're going deep again and they've got a man again that's Coleman well into Fresno State territory the big play guy with another big catch that one goes for 22 yards Coleman's stride length dictates respect from the DBs. He's so large, you've got to give him cushion because with that stride length, he can get past you and he can get to top speed very quickly. So he's going to have his pick. If they play him tight, he's going to run by him. If they play off, they're going to run 18 to 20 yards down the field, be able to throw it. It's a great opportunity. Well, Gary Nova, the quarterback, he's attempted 10 passes and thrown for 155 yards in his first half. So they're taking shots down the field. High formation, and they give it to the tailback running right, picking his way forward, and tackled short of the 30-yard line. Again, that's Paul James, the sophomore from Glassboro, New Jersey. You know, we talked about the fact uh, Gary Nova has not been a high percentage completion guy, so you're much more likely to take shots. We've got a big receiver. We're not going to complete 65 to 75 percent of our passes. Let's take more shots. The odds are he will complete them. I like it. Play yeah. to your strengths. Exactly. If he's not going to complete 70 percent of his passes, and that's not been the track record, use the strong arm. Use the big play wideouts. And we've already seen they've got several of them. So second down here and about six to go. Single coverage down there, but now they're running the ball. Uh, James with another carry. And there wasn't a whole lot of room there. He got a yard or so to set up third down. Manageable third down, but going to require a completion of five to six yards or more. Well, we've seen they're just about in field goal range now. Their place kicker. With an impressive 48-yard field goal earlier, Kyle Federico, but Rutgers does not want to settle for a field goal try. The other good thing about the ball almost in the middle of the field gives all of your passing game because you can go either way, right or left side. James still in the backfield, and Rutgers will shift on offense in a tightly bunched formation here. Play clock down to three. Nova throws. He's got the pass complete. Up the middle, first down, inside the 20, down to the 18. Nice job of shifting the bunch from one side to the other, which creates confusion in the mind of the defense. The idea of the bunch is to create mismatches so you can get releases for your receivers. They cross, and then somebody doesn't get picked up, and it's an easy completion for five yards. They use the fullback, Michael Burton, there, the former walk-on, who's turned into a, a nice player for Rutgers. Burton will handle the ball more this season, and you can see why. First and 10, Scarlet Knights at the Bulldogs' 18-yard line. Kind of a high snap, but the handoff given right side running. And some fairly powerful running, just not a lot of room for Paul James. Well, I still don't think the Rutgers team is built for the speed run to the outside. The linemen aren't built that way, and the backs aren't built that way. They're more, a power, more of a power running team inside, like to go downhill, and that's honestly what they should do. 
Nova in the huddle. Rutgers has huddled up for most of this game on offense. Fresno State has hardly huddled at all. The two different styles on the offensive sides in this matchup. Rutgers and the Bulldogs of Fresno State at second and ten. Nova from under center goes middle. Another pass complete short of the first down. But third down and a more manageable distance. That time the tight end Tyler Croft. I think we're seeing great decision making by Gary Nova. He has improved just in the course of this game from his accuracy, his sense of timing of getting rid of the football, and then putting it on one side or the other away from the defender. So I'm liking what I've seen. Yeah, that's a good point. And the offensive line's given him time. This is a pressure defense for Fresno State. They have not gotten much of a pass rush going. So it's third and four. Inside the 15 of the Bulldogs. Play fake. Looking left, still looking. End zone and caught, but out of bounds. So no touchdown. Leonte Carew, pretty athletic play again. He came down with the ball, but out of bounds. It's fourth down. Yeah, well covered, great protection, but really nowhere to go on that play. Great coverage by Fresno State. You see him playing it into the end zone, using that as the 12th defender, the end line. So the field goal try coming up. Kyle Federico hit one from 48 yards earlier. This time 29 yards with that angle from the right hash mark. The snap and hold. The kick is on the way. And the kick is good. So Federico, his second field goal in this first half. Rutgers, impressive start to their season. The Scarlet Knights on the road now leading 20-7. Rutgers with the 20 to 7 first half lead on the road against the Fresno State Bulldogs. Fresno State had a 7 nothing lead in this game and I think a big play in this one. The freshman Janarian Grant took the kickoff after the Bulldogs touchdown and showed off some great speed. I agree. It's not just the play itself but it took away a lot of momentum that Fresno State had created on the first drive and then this perfect pass. Nice job. Poor play by the Fresno secondary. Got him going in. Fresno had a chance to come back and an inadvertent throw. Air in the end zone there by Derek car intercepted and tough because that's that's a seven point swing uh, Grant LaRue and Thomas young guys with big plays and how about the quarterbacks Derek Carr the guy getting all the publicity and yet Gary Nova has gone toe to toe with him and really in some ways has outplayed him Fresno State getting the ball back here the coverage has been excellent for the Scarlet Knights Dylan Root brings it back across the 20 yard line first and 10 Bulldogs I would agree with you and right now Gary Nova is I think up to his ante in terms of, hey, I'm a guy. He reads the papers too. He's probably reading about, he's going to play this other quarterback that's got the Heisman looks and all this type of thing. And he says, hey, we got some players too. I'm going to make some plays. And he certainly is doing that. Now Derek Carr, who's got the pedigree, younger brother of a former number one overall NFL draft pick. Guy who set a conference record for passing yards, Mountain West Conference record last year, over 4,000 yards and 37 touchdowns. Explosive Bulldogs offense last season. And yet so far the Rutgers defense has played very well. First and ten Fresno State car pressured steps up a little pump fake he's going to run and he'll get a block to the edge to the 35 dances out of bounds at the 39 across to the 40 yard line. That, that's what a veteran quarterback can see. You know, they're in an empty formation, which means that there's nobody back there, but they're only rushing four guys. Everybody else is dropping in coverage and looking at the receiver. So once he breaks, if, if he doesn't see somebody open, he can get by the line of scrimmage. He knows he's got a long way to go. And you mentioned that 40 time. The ball's loose on the ground and nobody sees it. Rutgers is going to fall on it, and it's a turnover. The Scarlet Knights have the ball. Garif Glashen comes up with the fumble and Rutgers stuns this Fresno State even more with another big play on defense. Oh Moving on the field. Another turnover. Fumble. They're coming by the defense. First down. You know, his knee may have been down, though, when he was on the ground. It, it, we'll see if we can take a look. I know that they're probably looking at it upstairs right now, but take a look and see right here when he goes down. Ah, mm. I think he might be down. That wow. might be. That might come back. Uh, what a big play that would be. That would, that would be a great break for Fresno State because right at that point, if his right knee touches down and the ball is on the ground, I don't know. Maybe he got the ball off it, but if his knee is down, he's down. Yeah. So the question would there. be: Is the knee down, and did he have possession of the ball while the knee was down? And I believe that the they're previous place is under further review. So they are going to look at it, and that's exactly right, Mike. They're going to try to see 
Rutgers thinks it has the turnover, and you can see why they would think that, but it could be that Fresno State got the break there. And I guarantee you the Rutgers coaches are going, run a play, run a play, hurry up before they signal it dead. And it, this will be a big play, a, a lot of momentum, huge, huge potential turnover. So let's see if we can see knee down, and did he have the ball in his hand in possession with the knee down? The knee is definitely down right there. And, and, I, and he has possession, I believe. So. I think he has it. It came out real quick. It was almost moving as he lifted it up to try to get away from the hit of Darius Hamilton. Yeah, right there, his knee is down, and he has the ball clearly in his hands. He's trying to grasp it with the other, but I think I think they would judge that to be control of the ball. I would think so, too, but they're still taking a look upstairs. And obviously both coaches are sending prayers up saying, hopefully it's my way. I, Rutgers wanting the ball and Fresno State hoping that, you no, know, my player's knee was down. We need the ball back. Because this could be a huge field position opportunity for Rutgers. That ball is at the 34-yard line going in there already almost in field goal range. It's worth pointing out with all of the review plays that we have, there has to be evidence that is worthy of overturning the call on the field. So that's a key to any replay review. Tracy Jones, the head referee, waiting for the ruling from upstairs. Indisputable video evidence. And it, it, was, it was, there was a lot of evidence there. I guess yeah. there's a question whether it was indisputable or not. Car. Yeah, and I will tell you this. The officials do an unbelievable job because we have to literally go through replays five and ten times to determine what really happened. They're making split-second decisions on the field. And as a coach, I used to not like the officials very much a lot of the time, but most of the time I'd go back and look at the films, and they were right. Now, Mike Velotti here with me tonight, head coach, longtime head coach at Oregon, very successful. And you came here a couple times with your Ducks to Bulldog Stadium, played against Fresno State a couple times. Yeah, one of the few teams that would come here and play them. I think uh, during the course of my career, I played Fresno State five times, three up in Eugene and two down here. And we were very lucky. We won every one, but they were all tough, hard-fought battles. What were you thinking doing that <laughs> scheduling? Yeah, I didn't do the scheduling back then. That's, that's exactly what it was. Someone else was doing that scheduling. So the officials, and I think they are now getting the ruling, and it looks to me like they're trying to signal across the field to Kyle Flood, the Rutgers head coach, Tim DeRuder, the Fresno State head coach, talking about what's going on. If it does go back to them, it's going to be second and 14 or 15, so it's going to be a difficult long yarded situation. Uh, obviously would be a big break for Fresno State, even at a difficult spot. The turnover would have given Rutgers the great field position. So now they may have to be determining about where the ball yeah. is spotted. So take another look at it just to get the, the spot correct. Let's listen in. After review, it was determined that the runner had possession of the ball and was down at the 35-yard line. It will be second down and 15 from the 35-yard line. Please start the clocks on my signal. That might be a play that helps spark Fresno State a little bit. That now the other thing is oftentimes Rutgers or the defense will come with a blitz after that type of play they're mad the coaches are frustrated also it's a long yardage situation they may want to come after it. well and ultimately that's a good look at what they were looking at ultimately the idea of replay get the call right and I think that in this case they got the call right absolutely there were a lot of coaches that were not for replay they didn't want the officials to be able. I was I said let's get it right you hit it right on the head well, Derek Carr that first drive was something else. Since then, it's been a lot tougher, and not just the yards, but the way they've had to go about it. The Rutgers defense made a pretty good adjustment in this game, and now still some confusion. We'll get ready to play ball here in just a moment. Second and 15 coming up. Fresno State has lost some of their rhythm, and part of it, you get going in a rhythm, getting the ball off quickly, getting outside, get three to five yards each time. They've lost that ability, so they're getting more negative yardage play or no yardage play, which sets up more difficult situations. I think that's true. I think these high tempo spread offenses are based in large part on rhythm. Carr pressured, and he's going to be dropped. A penalty flag is thrown, but the Scarlet Knights drop Carr. It's a sack and a loss of about five yards. Holding offense, number 76. Penalty is declined. Third down. 
And Marcus Thompson, who may be the tough guy on the team, the penalty was against Alex Fafita, but the penalty declined. The sack holds. It's third and very long. We saw this situation just the two series ago, third and 20. Rutgers will probably sit in a zone, bring minimum pressure, and make sure that Carr has to dump the ball off underneath, rally to the ball, and tackle the guy short of the first down. Five receivers, empty backfield, Carr in the shotgun. On third and 19 with the clock moving, second quarter here in Fresno. And even that four-man rush gets some pressure on. The ball was tipped. An excellent play by the defensive back there. And the incomplete pass. Lou Toller knocked it away. It's fourth down. And you see the chess match. Fresno State calling a play where the pass is thrown all the way 20 yards down the field with sort of a pick route or a wheel route, as we call it, because they knew that they would be sitting in the zone. Now more good defense from Rutgers. It forces another punt for Swanson. Low punt. We'll see if Grant has a chance to return. He mops the return. He signaled fair catch. Lost the ball, and Fresno State has it. Well, this time, the special teams play in favor of the Bulldogs. Yeah, sometimes the freshman give it, and sometimes they take it away. But, you know, a touchdown and a fumble. Bruton on the field is a muff punt recovered by the kicking team. First down. Actually, it looked like he caught that ball. Oh, no, he didn't. It, it just bounced right out of there. Yeah, for that backwards angle, yeah. it did look like yeah. he had it for a moment. And if a fair catch was ruled, maybe he could have had possession. But clearly, from that angle, he did not. And Detweiler recovered the fumble for Fresno State on special teams. A pass out into the flat burst, upfield, first down inside the 30, and down to the Rutgers 25. Back to their bread and butter. The rhythm throw outside, three on two, the quick screen to the to the field. 15-yard completion. And Fresno State with the turnover on special teams, their fortunes have changed here. They should do it again, either top or the bottom. Carr passes middle, and it's caught at the 20. Nifty move from Harper. And with the extra effort, he gets about eight yards inside the 20 down to nearly the 16. They like Harper. You know, he got hurt last year, but they think he has the same type of ability as Devontae Adams. Big time receiver that can do something with the ball after the catch. Yeah, the junior from St. Mary's High School in Stockton, big time football program there. Carr pressured, and he gets rid of the ball, heaves it out of bounds, incomplete, and avoids the sack. Rutgers, much like Fresno State, wants to be a pressure defense. I don't know that they want to turn loose defensive linemen inside, though. I think that was a mistake inside by the Fresno State offensive line. Isaac Holmes put the pressure on and forced that incompletion. So it's third down and one. Rutgers has a chance to force Fresno State into a tough decision. If Probably they two downs here. I, I would go two downs. I'd run the ball because I think, and again, Rutgers is anticipating run. They've come up very tight, loading the box right now. They're, they don't have enough defensive backs out here at the bottom of the screen. You see three receivers, only two guys. They fake the handoff. Carr looking left, and he throws short left. The pass is caught, and it is a first down for Fresno State. Once again, Josh Harper with the reception. They had an underneath guy. That was sort of the pump and go. They were showing that quick screen, trying to catch the Rutgers defense off guard. Great job of being patient, but Fresno State still picks up the first down. Harper now five catches, only 27 yards. Carr and Fresno State on the move. The lob play. Adams, a lot of contact. Flag is thrown. That unfortunately was an easy call. That was contact inhibiting the receiver from getting to the ball. And the defensive back did not have his back and his <laughs> eyes to the ball. Defense, number two. The ball would be spotted at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Now you can take a look right here. There it is. He would have to turn into him, look back for the ball to have any chance. He cannot grab a hold or make contact. Easy call. That one, yeah. yeah not a lot of nuance call, yeah. to that call. So, Garif Glasson with the penalty. It'll be first and goal, Fresno State at the two. That's what you call great field position right there. Yeah. Four chances to punch it in and make this a closer game. You have two backs, Waller and Meisenheimer. They give it. And Waller stops short of the goal line. He got a yard, but only one. I thought he was going to score right there. I thought there was a big enough hole, but the Rutgers guys inside rallied to close that hole immediately. 
It'll be second and goal from the one. Normally, I'd say I'd be surprised if they take the ball uh, and put it in the air. I think they'd run this in. The crowd doesn't like the fact that uh, one of the Rutgers guys is down right now, and I think he really is. It. I don't know if it's a cramp or whatever, but. Well, Glossen, who just committed that penalty, and it could well be a cramp. The, the heat, it's still very warm here. The sun has gone down mercifully. It was over 100 degrees in Fresno today. It was just a scorching hot day. Despite practicing double days, too, kids are not prepared for the amount of expenditure of energy they do in a first game. In a combination of nerves and running up and down the field, it takes its toll. And we oftentimes have more cramping and more situations, dehydration in a first game basis than any other time. Well, you and I were watching that South Carolina, North Carolina game earlier today to sort of kick off the college football season. And I think we saw that very clearly in that game. No question. The point I was going to make, though, at the one yard line, second down, I don't believe that they're going to throw the ball. They could because Fresno State does that, but I would believe they're going to punch this one in. Second and goal for the Bulldogs. Rutgers with the 20 to 7 lead, but trying for a goal line stand on defense. And Patrick Sua in the game, who plays mostly linebacker. He wears number 30. You can see him in the huddle. But he comes in as a fullback type on these kind of plays. So he's in the backfield along with Carr. And they give the ball once again. But again, I think stops short. That time it was Meissenheimer, and he could not get in. And I think Rutgers has substituted also in Gonza their goal line package, which so. typically is an extra down lineman. So they go to like a double eagle, five man, five man down. See how stubborn Fresno State is trying to punch it in. Sometimes coaches want to be stubborn. They want that and chest themselves early to make sure, hey, everybody in the stadium knows we're going to run the ball. We need to be able to punch it in. This is their 11th third down play of this first half. Another handoff and again stopped short. Meisenheimer stood up inside the one, but brilliant defense from Rutgers, one of the stars of this half, Darius Hamilton. But now a penalty flag is down. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 91. After distance to the goal, automatic first down. Wow. Did I say good field position earlier? <laughs> Let me rephrase that. This is good field position. Well, Hamilton, who really has played a great half for Rutgers, he's been doing a lot of good things. Just a sophomore from West Patterson, the son of a New York Giants great Keith Hamilton a very talented kid but that was an ill time penalty no and unfortunately that was a great play by Rutgers the, one of the problems for Fresno State their backs right now are not quick enough to get to that hole the hole is open it's closing faster than they can get there now quickly to the line Derek Carr takes a snap they're going to try to throw and toward the corner of the end zone incomplete intended for Harper there was contact no flag thrown they this thought they may, might be able to get an easy one there. People were thinking they're going to run the football. But I think they're going to come back and run it. I think right now their manhood has been challenged by Rutgers. And they're going to say, guys, we need to prove something to ourselves. Well, this has been anything but easy. There was some contact there, but not nearly as much. That was a good no call. That was Ian Thomas again, the redshirt freshman on the coverage. It's a second and goal. And they do hand it off, fighting for the goal line. Waller reaching. And what's the signal? I thought he was touchdown. Good. And that was about as difficult as it could be for Fresno State, but they finally punch it in. Fresno was pretty lucky not to have to be faced with fourth and one or make a really tough decision. That penalty obviously helped them a great deal. Get them four more downs down there. So Fresno State does get the touchdown. And it was Meisenheimer, Malik Meisenheimer, who did get that carry into the end zone. Extra point coming up here. And we may have a review of this one. The ruling on the field is the runner broke the plane of the goal line for a touchdown. The play is under further review. Meisenheimer is their battering ram type guy. Let's see if we can take a look and see. It looked to me as if he put the ball over at some point before his knees went down. Let's take a look. 
I don't think he's down. I think the ball is over right there, and his legs are still off the ground because the defenders have a hold of them. So the real question, I think, is just where that ball ended up. But he's got possession. We're not going to see it for the mass of bodies, probably. Tough to tell. Very hard to tell. And that's why I say this line judge is coming in trying to figure it out, too. But we can sort of look right here. He puts his arm, I think, right there. He's got the ball over because the ball is at the same number as 30-something right there. Yeah. So I think he's in. And two keys on that review. Number one, I think you said the, the, the you, it looked like the knee was never down at any point there. But number two, you got to have evidence to overturn the call. Exactly. And it was determined to be a touchdown on the field. So unless they can see something that the knee was down or the ball was not in. Let's take one more look here. Maybe we see something from this angle. It might show it to us. Yeah, there's the ball. There's the ball. I, yeah, I think it, I actually think even from this angle, it looks as if the ball did cross the plane. Yeah, I just don't think they're even if it didn't. I don't know how they would overturn that call. How many plays was that down there? Four, five, six, four. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So that language does tell you, they'll say confirmed if the video evidence tells you, oh, yeah, we got the call right for sure. We see that we got it right. They use the language, the call stands if, well, we just couldn't tell, so the call stands. Fresno State needed those points to stay in this game. So it's the true freshman from Austin, Texas, Colin McGuire. He was on to try to kick the extra point. Point game. And he does just that. So Fresno State with a big score getting toward the end of the first half. And a lot of mistakes for Rutgers helped make it happen. First, there was the muff punt return that gave Fresno State the ball back. Excellent field position. A pass interference call in the end zone. And then finally, after a bunch of tries, Fresno State punches it in. Plus, we'll show you how it wrapped up in Columbia, Dave. All right, Matt, thanks. Hey, it's still baseball season. We can have a baseball score in a football game, so that one fairly surprising. This one, you might call it a surprise. Rutgers, an underdog coming across the country to play on the road. They have a 20 to 14 lead, though, 417 to go until halftime. It's nine or ten point underdog, and they have and they didn't help themselves on that last drive, unfortunately, with a couple of mistakes. They the fumble punt as we talked about and then a couple of penalties that really helped Fresno State. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. <laughs> they did not help themselves. We saw Jeremy Deering, who's an excellent kick return man. He's back deep to receive. And the kick is a very short one. And that'll be caught short of the 30-yard line. Rutgers will take over. Some of the best players from around the country are featured on the ESPN High School Football Showcase. Don't miss this one. Colquitt County in Georgia against Hoover, Alabama, 11 p.m. Eastern on Friday on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. Powerhouse kind of programs. Part of our ESPN High School Football Showcase. Now, Gary Nova and Rutgers, it's been a while since they ran a play. Yeah, that's, I was going to say that that last drive took a long time. A lot of reviews, a lot of looking at the film on that one. 27 minutes of real time since they last ran an offensive play. Only about four minutes of game time. But there were reviews and reviews, and yeah, that was a weird few minutes of football. Pass complete left side. And man, is he impressive. Brandon Coleman, NFL scouts are talking about possible first round pick, big time playmaker, and maybe not totally in the limelight at Rutgers, but this kid can play. I don't see any weaknesses right now. As they talked about, he's got range, he's got speed, he seems to catch everything thrown at him, and then he can make yards after the catch. So, wow, I draft him. A very quiet guy. They call He's only a junior. They call him Grandpa because he's just kind of laid back, doesn't act like one of the kids. But when he steps on the field, he can really, really play. Second and five. Nova under center. 
Short drop and the pass is complete over the middle across the 40. And it's a first down for Rutgers. This time, Ruhan Peel with the reception. And they like him too. Another young receiver. He was probably so excited just to catch the ball. Had he turned and put his foot forward, he could have run for 10 more yards. But he was excited there just to catch the football. Well, the redshirt freshman got his first reception of his Rutgers career. If you're a Rutgers fan right now, part of this first half, you got to be excited about the young kids. Pitch play left side and trying to get to the edge. No. Good pursuit from the Bulldogs defense. Deron Smith, the All-American candidate at safety, tackles Savon Huggins. Deron Smith can make those kind of plays all over the field. I've said this already several times tonight. Rutgers should not run laterally. They don't have the speed against this Fresno State defense. They're more built for downhill run. Inside run. Rutgers, Mike, looks like it's trying to be deliberate here late in the first half and perhaps trying to keep Fresno State from getting the ball back. I think no question. Their goal would be to go down and score with no time left on the clock. That pass complete, but very short, and a quick tackle for a short gain of maybe three yards. Peel gets another reception, but it'll be third down. It's a big third down here, because as you talk about, if they can get a first, they can take the clock down under two minutes, but they got a chance also to get into uh, President State territory. Otherwise, they got to give them the ball back. So, huge play. Got to throw it. I, I would be, not be surprised to see him move the pocket a little bit, take advantage of Nova's agility. Fresno State has all their timeouts. They did not use one there. So, Rutgers sort of milking the clock, third and seven. And pressure immediately. Nova, nice move. And the pass is tipped up and incomplete. He had a man for just a moment. But good defense from the Bulldogs. It's fourth and seven. Bulldogs a little bit lucky there. They had a blitz coming. Gary Nova eluded it uncontested and then almost threw it right into the hands of the defender. So Donovan Lewis, the linebacker in pass coverage with the nice play. They like his athleticism, his range. He's one of those young guys that they said can run also. Nick Marsh, the new punter for the Scarlet Knights. With some pressure, but he gets the punt off, and it's a booming kick. It's going to bounce into the end zone. So a very long punt, 55 yards. It'll only net 35, but with pressure on him, Nick Marsh did a nice job. Yeah, he booted that actually too well. He's not going to be very happy, and neither will the coaches. They much love that to be inside the 10 anywhere because you basically give them 20 yards of field position. Well, Fresno State playing here at home, trailing by six, but they do get the ball back. Fresno State part of the Mountain West Conference and big expectations. The Mountain West now divided, Mike, into two divisions. For the first time this year, they will play a conference championship game. Yeah, and they're the odds on favorite in that West Division. I think they, coming into this game, were considered to be maybe the best team in the conference. Boise is a young team, but Joe South with the quarterback for Boise has done a great job second half of last season. Hard to bet against the Broncos, but those are the two favorites in the Mountain West. Pass, complete left side, and out of bounds to stop the clock. Short of a first down, but Devontae Adams with the catch. Fresno State should be well equipped for the hurry-up offense. I was just going to say, this actually may help them because they like this tempo. They've got to go fast. They're going to use the middle of the field to get first downs and the sideline to get out of bounds. Two minute offense, that's a regular offense. Setting up a screen play and the pass is caught. 30, 35, and across the 35 down to the 38 yard line. There's Malik Meisenheimer, the guy who got the touchdown for the Bulldogs with a nice gain in the pass game, 12 yard reception. The screen is a great way to neutralize the defensive line. Rutgers showing some pressure. Derek Carr back to pass and complete left sideline out of bounds. Clock stops again. The pass caught by Greg Watson. Great job by the Fresno State offensive line. There were six or seven guys from Rutgers up there faking like they were coming, dropping. They all sort of came. They did a great job of picking it up. Here's Adams turning it upfield and tackled inbounds. They're going to stop the clock because I do think he got the first down. But now a penalty flag all the way on the other side of the field. The officials are going to get together and talk about it. Sometimes a defensive player on the far side may not know. They want to get it sorted out before they make an announcement here. 
The play did get the Bulldogs a first down. Maybe some sort of substitution type penalty against Rutgers. Substitution infraction. Defense. 12 players on the field at the snap. Five yard penalty resulting in the first down. So they'll march the ball right near midfield. Fresno State on the move. Rutgers has played well in this first half, but they're back on their heels right now. And they shouldn't have got that penalty. When they're in, the, in quick going, they have to know that and not try to substitute. So first and 10, Fresno State. Derek Carr in the pocket looking. Short middle. Pass caught. Coming across the field and all the way across. Out of bounds. The quickness there on display for Josh Harper. Wow, he had a burst right there. They they had two guys with angles to tackle him inbounds. He beat them. He knew I had to get out of bounds to stop the clock. So second down and three after the seven-yard game. Carr again swings it out left side. Meissenheimer got stacked up right at the first down marker. What a tackle there. Big hit. Excellent play by Nadir Barnwell, the true freshman with a big hit. Meisenheimer more of a battering ram than a ballerina. He couldn't make that guy miss in the open field. First, well, Fresno State will use out. their first time out Fresno of this State. first half. 52 seconds to go. Fresno State on the move. Rutgers with the 2014 lead. Rutgers with the 2014 lead here at Fresno State. 52 seconds to go in the first half of the Bulldogs on the move in their two-minute drill kind of hurry-up offense. Derek Carr, their senior quarterback, out of the timeout. He's got plenty of time on the play clock to survey things. And the Bulldogs now snap the ball. Pressure comes from Rutgers. Carr throws, and it's caught by Devontae Adams. Left sideline, dancing along the sideline. He was pushed out of bounds, though, back outside the 20. Still a nice game. Derek Carr reincarnated to the guy who led him on the first drive. This is the tempo he loves. He is confident. He's poised in the pocket. He understands the protection. He's directing traffic out there and delivering the ball on time. Yeah, you've been saying that all half. Play up tempo. That's when their offense really hums. 18-yard play. Now the dump pass left side and the shove out of bounds. So Quezada with the catch and it gets out of bounds. Seven-yard game. The Fresno State is in their element. And by doing that, they've taken Rutgers out of theirs. Rutgers cannot get the defenses they, can, they want to do. Well, the time now shouldn't be a factor at all. Fresno State still has two timeouts, 40 seconds, and they're right at the 15-yard line of Rutgers. So the clock should not be a concern. Look at the numbers on the drive for Derek Carr. No, he, as I said, he's that's exactly what he's very comfortable. Dink and dunk and throw the ball. Field pressure, he's got the screen outlets. He's doing a great job of directing traffic and distributing the football. Quezada stays in as the tailback. One receiver left, that's Adams, three to the right, and now a whistle, and Rutgers calls a timeout. I think they decided First, they need to talk. Timeout. Well, I, I think it's a smart timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Because yeah. you're not preserving time for the opponent in the two-minute drill. You're just trying to get organized on defense. Absolutely. You want to make sure your personnel groups, you want to make sure that they understand if you're doing pressure or coverage or what looks that they're giving. Because right now, Carr has come back into his element. He's feeling so comfortable. They've got to do something to di disrupt that timing. Whether it's an all-out blitz or probably more importantly, it's going to be a show blitz and drop into coverage and flood those zones. Well, Devontae Adams, a sophomore coming off a huge year. This was a big play for Fresno State to get down inside the red zone. One of the other things about this catch is not just that. Did you see the back step up and take on the blitzing linebacker? That's what David Carr has to, Derek Carr, excuse me, has to have in his comfortable work. Older brother, I'm sure, is watching and rooting Derek on. 40 seconds to go in the first half. Fresno State with a touchdown and an extra point could take a lead into the locker room. Here's a throw middle and a good catch. No. It hit the ground. Isaiah Burst with a great effort there but could not hang on. It's third down. Yeah, this. I think they've got to get the first down here. I don't think they're going to do this too far. And they might even run a quick trap or something like that because as you saw last time, Rutgers is dropping the linebackers into the pass lanes. They're susceptible to a run play right here. 
Rutgers trying to hold and force a field goal try. Third and three. Derek Carr pressured, throws, and it's caught by Adams over the middle. The tackle inside the 10, but it is a first down for the Bulldogs. First and goal. They're going to get a minimum of a field goal, but they really want a touchdown here. They're going to work very hard to get that ball in the end zone. Well, now another whistle and another timeout. Second charge timeout. Fresno State. So Fresno State. It'll be a 30 take second time timeout. Out. Well, there is. Derek Carr, the fifth-year senior, has a chance to set a lot of records at Fresno State. His older brother David set a bunch of records himself. Yeah, and I think that was sort of his model to work from, and I think certainly he's learned a lot being around his brother, probably from his brother. I'm sure that they in the offseason sometimes get the chance to throw the ball and just talk about football, talk about a little bit like the Manning brothers, you know? I mean, they, they have a chance to emulate some of that. Yeah, the number one overall pick, and the, yeah, there's a big age difference. Derek was a little kid when his brother was starring here at Fresno State, the whole family with the quarterback pedigree. He was a pretty cool kid, Derek Carr. Here, wow. Uh, sort of born to be a quarterback. And uh, Trent Miller, our ESPN colleague, another part of the quarterback legacy here at Fresno State. David Carr's number retired, and I think Derek someday will be as well. 25 seconds to go. It's first and goal. Carr, plenty of time on that play clock out of the timeout. So just getting organized. Those three receivers bunched up on the right side. Back to pass. Looking right. Pass is caught on the slant inside the five by Isaiah Burse. And the clock rolls. 15 seconds to go until halftime. I wouldn't have taken that other timeout. I was going to comment on that. I'm not sure why they did that. And now they want a timeout, and they will take it, and that was not handled well. No, no this is – they should have clocked it. They should not – and in my opinion, they should not have taken that other timeout. Just keep them in your pocket. You didn't need it. they just gotten a decent play. Before the snap, third and final timeout, Fresno State. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Now what happens is you have to have a decision because six seconds – is not enough time if you run a pass play in theory unless it is a quick immediate pass you probably will not have another play so they have to decide if they're going to go for the touchdown or kick a field goal for the sure points yeah if you're going to use the timeout there your final timeout just call it as soon as the tackle is made and they would have what uh, 12 13 seconds something like that maybe more yeah. or don't clock. get yourself down to that situation they called the timeout before there was nothing wrong with the play and wrong with the situation at least from our vantage point so you know you never know what goes on there may have been something that happened on the sideline the play was miscommunicated the group was wrong or something like that but in this situation you're right a quicker timeout call or spiking the ball quick, much quicker, or running a route that was going to be in the end zone as opposed to catching the ball outside the end zone. And now you have to throw the ball. If you run and are tackled short, the clock's going to expire. So basically it takes away your options unless you're really willing to gamble. On second and goal with six seconds to go. Derek Carr, who's already attempted 35 passes in the first half, he'll attempt another one. Over the top, Adams, caught! And he's inbounds, touchdown! He is a sore puppy right now. He landed right on his tailbone, but the good thing is that tailbone landed in the end zone. Great catch, the perfect throw to right where he could get it. And look at the clock. One second to go until halftime. Fresno State has tied the game. Devontae Adams sacrificed himself for that touchdown catch. But he's a mismatch because he has height and he has length. Not quite the length of a Brandon Coleman, but he's still a tough matchup. It's not a real high percentage play, and had the ball been knocked away, time may have expired. They may not have had a chance to set up for a field goal. We'll hope that Devontae Adams is okay. And Derek Carr with the fist pump, I think he tells everybody that he is. Well, whether he's hurting or not, he's pretty excited about catching that ball and getting the touchdown. So he'll make it off the sideline at least. Well, he had 14 touchdown receptions as a freshman last year. Just a spectacular freshman year. Starting off strong as a sophomore. And you talk about bursting on the scene. And watch this ball thrown up again. Perfect location. He does a great job at the jump ball and then coming down inbounds. And now the extra point, Fresno State, before halftime, will try to... on the field is a completed pass for a touchdown. The play is under review. They may be looking at his feet if his feet hit out yeah. of bounds before his seat or butt hit down inbounds. And I, I couldn't tell from our look at it. Let's see. 
I think he's inbound. Yeah, I, think I do that too. Foot just got down. It was really close, though. Yeah, the what. heel, I think, touches down. Yeah, I think right in, <laughs> yeah. inbound. Yeah, the just toe barely. is still up in the air as the heel hits down. You know, you know what's really funny is you look at these plays as they happen. They want it's a touchdown easy, and then all of a sudden you realize that's really, really close. So Adams, uh, he was fighting to get that leg down. You know, look at it. We've had plenty of reviews in this first half, and we've said it every time. has to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the field. This is a good challenge, though, by if, if it was challenged. I don't know if Coach Flood challenged this or it was just a review, but you might as well take your shot. That was pretty good effort by Lou Toller, the defensive back there. I mean, watch where Adams catches the ball, not even close to that sideline, and Toller shoved him all the way near out of bounds. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's a great effort. That's a great shot of it right there. Any part of the body comes down in contact in the end zone first. Yeah, so I think that one will be confirmed. And at a minimum, the call is going to stand, but we'll see. And I will say this I think the Fresno State coaches have to think about this at halftime. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. My advice to them, and they may see it or fans may tell them, is go to hurry up the entire time. It's when Derek Carr is the most comfortable, the most effective, the most efficient. It puts the most stress on the Rutgers defense. So it's tied 20 to 20. The extra point, Bulldogs attempting to go ahead here. The true freshman, Colin McGuire, has looked comfortable in his first college game. His kick is perfect. And so the Bulldogs in the two minute offense, 11 plays, 80 yards. Every one of those plays was a pass play, and Derek Carr was 10 for 11 on the drive. Yeah, it, you know, it's so easy from up here in the press box or the, you know, the film room. We could talk about that, but I think. Derek Carr will probably say to coach coach. I like that tempo. Can we keep it going? It was an advantage. They got the ball back with a minute 44 to go until halftime and that made their offense better. They didn't have to think about it. They just did it. Well, Derek Carr it has not been the big play passes tonight that have hurt Rutgers and that's pretty interesting graphic there. Everything has been short. Well, if you have guys like Burse and Harper and Adams that you can throw the ball underneath and they're going to run for 5, 10, or 15 yards, you keep doing that. They're high percentage. You know you're going to get them a chance to catch the ball, and then with their speed in space, they're a tough matchup. 36 passing attempts in the first half for Derek Carr, 217 yards. A dark horse Heisman Trophy candidate, according to some. And he's going to put up some numbers this year. I mean, this is a good Rutgers defense. And there are going to be some games where the numbers are just going to look almost impossible. You're right. This is a very talented, very good, but very young Rutgers defense that lost 14 players from their team last year, seven draft choices, and seven free agents to the NFL. And they've come back pretty well. Well, the little kickoff just dribbled and touched by Rutgers. That will allow the final second to tick off the clock. And we go to halftime. Fresno State, they were down 20-7, to but the Bulldogs come roaring back with a couple of touchdowns near the end of the half. And Fresno State takes a one-point lead into the locker room. A whiteout night here at Bulldog Stadium. A lot of excitement to get the college football season started and Fresno State kind of a wild ride Rutgers played well for a good portion of that half the head coach of the Bulldogs is standing by with Lewis Johnson all right thanks very much well coach take us inside the last two minutes that led to that Defonte Adams touchdown well we do that drill all the time uh, I, I really like Derek Carr in it our offense is is efficient when we go fast and, and uh, we made some plays how much will you consider upping the tempo in the second half because that really seemed to work for you guys uh, that's that's our game plan and we'll ch keep changing it but uh, we're gonna try to go even faster and what do you make of this first Game, uh, first half of the first game is up and down really we knew it's gonna be a foot, uh, football game they got great players they've made plays we've made plays we just got to make one more in the second half and we'll see you then thanks, thanks Lewis all right Dave all right Lewis and just what we were just talking about the coach talking about the quicker tempo in the second half Bulldogs with the lead let's go to our Sports Center U studios with Matt and Charles That's my kind of night. Uh 
have plenty of action in the first half. Ready for the start of the second half for Bulldog Stadium. Fresno State with the 21-20 lead against Rutgers. Dave Fleming, Mike Bellotti back here at Bulldog Stadium. It's finally, finally starting to cool down maybe just a little bit. These two teams, Rutgers was the team that got off to the hot start. They fell behind 7-0, but Mike Rutgers then took control of the game. It was a sequence of mistakes, though, in the middle of that first half that really cost the Scarlet Knights the momentum in the game. It's pretty amazing. I, I was in love with Fresno State the first drive and the last drive because Derek Carr was in sync. In between, Rutgers took advantage of big plays, Gary Nova, but then Fresno State, the fumble on the punt really set this up. The P.I. in the end zone gave him a first and goal at the two. They eventually score, had to be looked at, and then finally at the end of the game, going back to the no huddle, get the big catch from Devontae, and he gets the seat down the end zone, take a one-point lead. We got us a ball game, but back and forth, the ebb and flow momentum has been really crazy. That's typical of a first game. So Derek Carr and company, after that fumble and the mistakes that Mike was just talking about, Carr was almost perfect, 13 of 16, and he ended up putting together a big first half. And I know that we, I said this before, and I think uh, Lewis asked him, get the ball going, get it up tempo, get it moving. So, for Rutgers, one bit of good news, they do get the ball at the start of the second half. And Rutgers did a lot of things very well. That sequence of mistakes cost them big time, but I think Rutgers can still feel good about their chances to win this game. Well, Gary Nova has really come of age in my mind. I mean, he has hit some big, big plays, and obviously Brandon Coleman, but Leontay Carew, too. I mean, huge play. So the kickoff again will go short, and it's caught at the 30-yard line. So Rutgers will have the ball. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Well, Dave, I sensed a lot of confidence from the Rutgers team as they made their way back onto the field. And when I asked the questions, the things that we were just talking about in terms of all the mistakes, there really was not much focus on that in the locker room because the coaches believed that the players were simply trying to make plays. On offense, they want to try and do a better job of running the ball. That's important to them right now. And as for the miscues, they said, look, guys are just trying to make plays. We want to see a better second half of football here, a clean half. That's what they're looking for. But again, I sensed confidence in this what we're seeing. All right, Lewis, thanks. And I think they, they should have some confidence. They did a lot of things very well. But they're down by a point as Nova and the Rutgers offense hand off, trying to establish that run game. And a good cut up field there. That was a nice run by P.J. James. And the nice job about that was that really wasn't an end run. That was a a zone run to the outside and then cut up when you see daylight. And that's a great job. The one place where Rutgers is falling short penalty wise, they've had six penalties. Fresno State's only had one. I don't know if that's home cooking or the reality just Fresno's a better team in that regard. But some of those penalties have definitely hurt Rutgers. Another handoff. This time the Bulldogs were ready for it. And a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe the effort by James got him back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down. The nice thing about third and four or third and five is you do have it's an either or down you can throw the quick pass you can throw a regular five step drop you can move the pocket they're on the hash so I'll look for them to move the pocket or use the bunch set that they used in the past to try free up receivers off the line of scrimmage. You saw those modest rush game numbers for Rutgers. Third and four. Nova in the pocket, pressured, throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for the big play receiver, Brandon Coleman. Not quite a perfect pass, though. It's fourth down. Not perfect, but certainly catchable. And that, that would have been a big play because they caught him crossing underneath, and he could have run for quite a while. It's not the way you want to start that third quarter drive when you get the ball. The three and out will give the Bulldogs the ball back. So Fresno State... Burst back to receive. Nick Marsh takes a snap, gets off an end over end kind of punt. It's going to bounce and burst, trying to save some yardage. He will. 25 gets to the outside, cuts up field. 30 runs into his teammate and ultimately gets knocked off balance and tackled at about the 33 yard line. But that was a good return. And unfortunately, I think they are going to have to credit his teammate with the tackle. Celebrating its ninth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship money. So thanks to Allstate. 
Now Derek Carr, who finished that first half with a real flourish, 36 pass attempts already in this game. And he's got his first possession of the Bulldogs offense back on the field in the second half. From the shotgun, and the pass, almost like a wide receiver screen to burst, another catch, but well defended. They're not as good an offense right now when they let the Rutgers defense affect their play calling or affect their choices at the line of scrimmage. I'd rather see them go up tempo. The heck with it. You may get an occasional play that isn't as good, but you will be getting the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. Good tackle by the senior Jamal Morrell. So it's second down and 10. Carr swing play left side and another tackle on the edge by Rutgers. So Kizada with the catch, but a very short gain to set up third down. And for a young Rutgers defense, they're actually doing a pretty good job of tackling. Tonight. That's the other thing on a first game basis. You really worry about, are we going to be able to tackle? You can't do it enough in fall camp because you worry about getting people hurt to make sure you can do it in a game. All spread out, five receivers. Carr alone in the shotgun on third and ten. Looking middle, flushed right. He'll throw short. It is caught. But the tackle in the open field, well short of the first down. Harper with the catch, but Fresno State's going to have to punt. Rutgers had success that time, sitting in the zone, make him throw underneath, and then rally to the ball, tackle him before he can get the necessary yardage. And I, I'm going to say this one more time. I don't like Fresno State as much when they're not at warp speed. It just seems to me that they are, they are more tentative in themselves. So Grant back to receive for Rutgers. Garrett one Swanson. touchdown, one fumble. So yeah, so let's see. He will run up and make the catch on the move, and the ball pops out again. This time, though, Rutgers is there to jump on the loose ball. Well, we saw the big play from Janarian Grant, but that's a couple of mistakes, and the Scarlet Knights get lucky as they will keep possession. Third quarter, 21-20, Fresno State leads. Well, yeah, Matt, it might be a little too early for that, but that is a crazy finish, and what a win for Ole Miss, Mike, a team that showed a lot of promise last year, brought in a lot of new talent. They go on the road in conference and get a victory. Great recruiting here. He frees to get it done, and Vandy, a great team, too, with what James Franklin has done there. Now that is a tough loss at home. The run game for Rutgers just has not gotten going. 21-20, that's the Fresno State lead here. Now, we've had a, a fairly wild game back and forth. Rutgers was up 20-7. Fresno State got the final two touchdowns of the first half, and now still a long way to go here in Fresno. Yeah, in the first half, it looked like Rutgers was going to sneak away with the game via big plays, but uh, Fresno State came back, got a couple of their own, and now we've got it neck and neck. Well, Gary Nova, the quarterback, the junior for Rutgers. Another handoff, right side running at a big hole. To the 40, to the outside, to midfield. 30, down inside the 20, all the way inside the 10, and finally shoved out of bounds after a very long run. Another carry for P.J. James, and that's the biggest play of his college career. And they like his explosiveness. They talked about that. They got a mismatch on that short side into the boundary. Got great blocks at the line of scrimmage. And then he makes, he makes the first guy miss, and now it's a foot race. Gets it all the way down to quick play. And incomplete intended for Coleman in the corner. So Nova trying to get off the quick snap. And the pass incomplete. It's second and goal. 65-yard carry for Paul James. They call him P.J., the sophomore, who had five rushes in his career before tonight. And he has emerged. He's made a couple of nice runs. Well, they like it. They talked about it. it's a youth movement on this team, and they're going to like what they see in the future. Well, James still in the game. It's an eye formation. Receiver Pratt in motion. Second a goal from right around the five. And a handoff. James picking his way forward. James inside the two. And stop there. It'll be third and goal. Okay, the question mark now if you're third and one is are you going to take it on the ground or are you give the quarterback a run pass option on the edge, which I would vote for just to give him that opportunity. Play action fake, rolling out over the top, try to utilize the width of the end zone, receiver in the short flat, receiver in the corner. Rutgers, third and goal. 
Inside the two yard line. Nova under center. Or just throw it up to Brandon Coleman. How about that? That would be a pretty good option too. Handoff though. Left side and nothing there. James tripped up and he might have lost a half yard. Awesome defense attacking and get there. The real question is though, what do you do now? On fourth down, a great job by the interior backers. I think they decided to take the sure points to go for the lead. Yeah, Carl Mickelson with a heck of a play. He was pleased with the effort. So the field goal try, and maybe if they were at the half yard line, they might have gone for it, but the ball spotted back outside the one. Well, at this point, you can take the lead, and I think that's the most important factor for Coach Flood. So 18 yard field goal try for Federico's made two kicks already in this game. The snap and the hold, and that one just barely knuckles through. Not by much, but he got the job done. Rutgers goes ahead once again. Well, the long play in the run game, Rutgers said they were going to stick with it, try to establish the run game. Paul James with a big play on the ground. That set up the field goal. Scarlet Knights back up by two. Back here in Fresno and a wild game and we got a long way to go still 948 to go in the third quarter 23 21 Rutgers on a field goal of 18 yards goes back ahead a long drive and they get the three points. Well, Nick Marsh will kick it off. And the Bulldogs set up the return game Fresno State's going to get the ball back it's Dylan Root deep and way deep out of the end zone for a touchback. Dave Fleming, Mike Bellotti with you. And for Rutgers, Mike, the big plays have been the real story of this game. That has been the ticket. The uh, kickoff return to jump start him, and I think due to the momentum, the big 69 yard TD reception by Carew, and then Paul James on the 65 yard run that didn't score but set up the field goal. And I love what our uh, colleague Lewis Johnson said coming out of halftime sticking with the run game that was the message he got from Rutgers and those first few attempts here in the second half were going nowhere but they stuck with it and broke the big one yeah and, and sometimes patience will pay off so Derek Carr and the powerful Bulldogs offense back on the field now down 23 21 Pass out into the right flat and it's incomplete and the defensive back for Rutgers sort of jumped that route and nearly made a play on the wall. That's Jamal Morrell, the linebacker looking like a DB. Yeah, that was scary and I'll tell you what, what can happen now is the Fresno State coach will say, we can't let him jump that. Let's do the pump and go. So they fake the screen, they pump it and they try to go deep. There's his brother, Jamil, a real loss, one of the best players on defense for Rutgers, and a game time decision. He is, as you can tell, not in uniform. He's not playing. He's got a foot problem. So they miss him down, off the edge. They do. Carr throws middle, caught, and now taking it all the way to the other side of the field to the 40, shoved out there. Josh Harper, who's having a big game for Fresno State. That was an interesting play in development. They actually sprinted the quarterback to the field and brought the receiver back underneath. And then he he really did a great job of getting all the way to the other sideline, picking up the first down. 15 yards for Harper, and they hit Adams this time. And the sophomore cuts it upfield, makes a couple of Rutgers defensive players miss. He gets nine yards. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Again, they're trying to pick it up. And yeah, you can see the quarterback car. He's barking at his teammates. 17 straight pass plays for the Bulldogs. And they'll have another one here. A catch and another stiff arm broken tackle. It's Isaiah Burst. Run after catch. A great part of this offense has is the premise of catch the ball and then make five to seven yards after the catch and even after initial contact. So the first down, fake handoff, sprinting left, the throw incomplete, and Carr's upset at himself. And maybe. He thought Adams was coming back towards him, so maybe a miscommunication there. I think he's supposed to settle down in that dead zone once he gets past the underneath coverage. I think it was just a lack of being on the same page. So second down, second and ten. Cars going deep right side. Harper out there, but good coverage, and it falls incomplete. Great coverage because he was at the level of the receiver. He turned into him, got his head back to the ball, so no PI could be covered. That's the red, redshirt freshman Ian Thomas again. Now take a look right there does a great job just gets a hand there initially but his eyes go back to find the ball. He'll never get called there. 
Well, it's been 25 minutes of football, and I think you can already tell that Ian Thomas is going to be a heck of a player for Rutgers. They're excited about those young defensive players. I tell you, they've got a great legacy to live up to. Kid from Baltimore played a lot of wide receiver in high school. Third and ten, Carr sort of out of that quick tempo, deliberate play clock winding down. Throws and the pass is caught. The tackle and finally wrestled down Burst short of the first down mark by about three yards. Yeah, brings up a big fourth down call. I'll tell you what, if they decide to punt, I would not put Janarian Grant in to return the punt. I think again, but they're not going to go for it. They're going to, I mean, excuse me, they're not going to punt. They're going to go for this, which I applaud them. Yeah, Fresno State, Tim DeRuiter, they're going for it here. Fourth and three. Car from the shotgun. Now he'll shift that back in the backfield. And a fake handoff. Carr keeps it. He's got the first down and more. And he takes a big hit, but pops back up. First down, Fresno State. Yeah, but he's got to learn not to do that. He had to, got the first down easily. He wanted to punish somebody, make a statement, but that's the way you break a collarbone, knock a shoulder down. He's got to stay healthy. Great job on the read zone, but get down once you've got the first down. Not usually a huge part of this Fresno State offense, but that looked pretty good. Did, and it caught Rutgers by surprise. Here's the pass caught by Adams, makes the first man miss. That quickness for the sophomore Devontae Adams. Down near the 10, another Fresno State first down. These receivers all have the ability, and even the quarterback, in space to make people miss. They have that step of quickness. Well, that's out. Eight catches for Devontae Adams, and the pass is caught. Touchdown, Josh Harper. A lot of weapons on the field for Fresno State. Harper's having a big game. Adams bursts all the wide outs, and Derek Carr, the tough guy play to keep the drive going. Tough guy play. That I, I guarantee you, the coach is going to tell him on the sideline, please do not ever do that again. Get yeah. the first down, get out of bounds, or get down. Great job, Derek. Now don't ever do that again. <laughs> Ten plays, 75 yards, just over two minutes. The fourth down conversion was huge. Extra point coming. And it's Colin McGuire. The kick is up, and it is good. Back and forth action here at Bulldog Stadium. Derek Carr and the Bulldogs are back in front. Well, we got a lot of football left here. I'll tell you what, take a look at him right here. He's at the full speed, but now you don't need to be a tough guy. You don't need to be a fullback. You need to be an NFL quarterback. But he is on that next play. You look at the touch where this ball is placed, right where you can get it. Tremendous job. And, again, the tempo thing, I think, really helps Derek Carr feel in his element. Yeah, he took one there. That was a shot. You see the cut. Yeah. Coaches, they're talking to him, too. He's, he's, he's smiling laughing. Yeah, hey, hey, maybe I'll get some stitches. You know, I look like a tough guy. A little higher, Derek. A little <laughs> higher. Yeah, there it is. Derek Carr is having another big game, and I don't know. He might still be feeling the effects of that yeah, hit. That collision, I was going to say. They'll be talking a lot about that. The coaches are saying, hey, did you learn from that? Did it hurt you a little bit? We don't want to do that anymore. Well, the guy who set the Mountain West record for passing yards in a season last year, he threw for 37 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. He threw a pick tonight, yeah. And that's unusual, but he has bounced back from that mistake. And Derek Carr and the Bulldogs are back up 28-23. Another short kickoff. They're doing this over and over again. Another fair catch at the 31-yard line. Rutgers gets the ball back. Now, part of the offense for Fresno State, Mike, is spreading the ball around, getting everybody involved. And look at that today. 11 for Burst, 10 for Harper, 7 for Adams. That's We talked about the diversity of his weapons, but also his ability to distribute the football. He's like a point guard in basketball. He literally feeds who's open and find ways to get the big men the ball, and he's doing a great job of it. Yeah, that's pretty amazing with still 7.43 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, that's a lot of completions. Now, those receivers, they're just going to put up ridiculous numbers this year. Handoff and another good hole. 
So the carry for almost eight yards and Paul James once again they're giving him the ball and the strength of this Rutgers offensive line is starting seemingly to wear down the Fresno State front just a little bit. They're getting more yards per carry now. The big plays help but again they're a big strong physical unit up front. Yeah it's interesting you say that Fresno State they've got a junior Tyler Davison right in the middle of that line you see him there number 92. He is a dynamic force. He's a good athlete and we have not talked about him much tonight. Yeah he hasn't made very many plays at least to our knowledge. Well, a penalty. I'll start. Offense number 86. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's the seventh penalty, Mike, already against Rutgers. Fresno State is still only committed the one penalty. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, it typically sometimes that'll happen to a road team, first game, the noise, and also to young teams. When you have young, excitable players, they're trying to get an edge or a jump on the snap count, and they're a little anxious to get going. A big difference in that number there, the penalties and the yards. Second and seven instead of. Second and, two. Second and two. And Nova with that tight formation under center. And a fake handoff. Back to pass going deep again. He's got his man out there and it's incomplete. Brandon Coleman, the big play receiver, and maybe the ball just drifted to the opposite shoulder. Yeah, probably one of the toughest catches a receiver has to make is when the ball is directly Hold overhead. Offense, number 70, 10 yard penalty, second down. And it wouldn't have mattered anyway. You hear the referee in the background with the holding penalty. Going to come back. So from second and two now, they've had two penalties. They're taking them back, and you don't want to do that. Obviously, it takes it out. All of your game plan and goes in the in the tank after that. Second and two. No, second and 17. And back. Well into their own territory at the Rutgers 24 yard line. The goal of this, if you don't get the first down, is just to get to a manageable. If you can cut this in half, get the third and seventh, third and eight, or maybe third and five, you take it. James alone in the backfield. Nova in the pocket, throws, and a great catch leaping up short of the first down, but a nice gain for Rutgers. Nice job in traffic to catch that ball, but even more importantly, you see the catch, but now they've got a very manageable third down. Great job of getting the DBs on their heels, stopping in that void, and then going up to catch the ball. Yeah, Karan Pratt, he's made a couple of impressive plays. He sort of gets overshadowed with Brandon Coleman, but he can play. Third and two is an either or down. You can run it, you can throw it, you can throw it quick. You can run a crossing routes because you expect a little bit of pressure from people in the box. Play clock starting to wind down as Rutgers breaks the huddle. Only five seconds left on the play clock. Nova knows he's got to hurry. And he gets the play off. He's going to rush it forward. He had a long way to go. That was an interesting play call. Almost like he thought they were a little closer to the first down. I don't think he got there. Going to be close, and I don't think he did. I think he may have seen a void in the front in the interior and said, I think I can sneak this for the necessary yardage. Well, they're going to stop the clock. And probably measure this thing, I would think. I would guess that's what they're going to do. That's what they're getting ready to do. They'll bring the chain out and take a look. Now, I couldn't tell if that was a design quarterback sneak or he actually just saw a void and said, I think I can run right through that hole. A couple wow. inches. Yeah. Very, very close, but okay. not quite. When you're on the road and you're up by two, no, you're behind by five, you go for it on your own 40? We'll see. How much of a gambler is Coach Flood? Well, this is a this is a tough decision. Five and a half minutes roughly to go in the third quarter. Down by what, five. A decision like this a lot of times can make a, co a coach his reputation with his team in terms of trust, confidence, courage, all those type of things. Yeah, well, he's made his decision, and he looks pretty confident about it. So here we go. Fourth and inches. We'll see if Melba just tries to push it forward himself. Receiver in motion. And they're going to hand the ball off, and they get the first down. A hole on the right side, right over the guard. Nice play. Coach Flood is impressed. First down, Rutgers. And that play will pay dividends for them the rest of the year because Coach Flood, his offensive line, the running backs, the entire team will have confidence. They'll be able to go for it anywhere, anytime because of that call. I like something you said earlier in the game too, Mike, and that is 
Hey, it's the first game. You're, you're almost in a way testing your own team. You want to see what they can do in those kind of spots. So first down, another handoff, and a good cut there. Paul James over 100 yards now, and another pretty impressive run. And those runs that were netting one or two yards or getting stymied at the line of scrimmage are now getting almost five yards. As I talked about, the strength and physicality of the Rutgers offensive line is starting to wear down that front of Fresno State. Well, the rest of the Rutgers rushing attack has not been effective, but James, they have found a guy to give the ball to. This is a breakout game for him. I formation, James stays in. On second down and six. They hand it to him, this time right side running. Those legs keep churning. Again, what could have been a short gain, and he gets to midfield and picks up about three. The other thing about when you can run the ball effectively or efficiently, you're getting three to four yards per carry. It sets up the play action that comes off the running game. So here at third and three, they've got an opportunity to run it potentially, to run the play action off of the run play, or to boot the quarterback. Third and three, Rutgers under center, right at midfield. Nova. Fake handoff, back to pass. He'll throw, and it is intercepted. No, dropped. Fresno State made a play on the ball there. Gerard Smith, the All-American candidate, was back there in coverage. Great job, great anticipation. He wasn't fooled by the fake step back over the top. And had a great break on the ball, and he thought about it. He thought he had 70 yards out in front of him to go. Well, the guy who's the preseason defensive player of the year in the Mountain West Conference, and he almost had his first pick of the year. He had six of them last season. So that good defensive play, even without the interception, does force the punt. Nick Marsh, who's got the big leg, this time a low line drive kick that takes a sideways bounce at about the 18-yard line. So not a great punt there. Rutgers goes back on defense Come out to the 33-yard three, kick. It's 28-23. Twenty eight twenty three Fresno State leading Rutgers the Scarlet Knights hanging in on the road last year Rutgers got a signature win away from home early in the year they went down into SEC country and beat a talented Arkansas team Brandon Coleman had a big game Gary Nova had probably his best game of his career he threw for almost 400 yards and five touchdowns a late score Rutgers on the road beat Arkansas 35 26 so with a lot of the same players particularly on offense Mike Rutgers knows they can go away from home and get a big win they did they were five and one on the road last year they actually were a very good road team with some young kids in the mix but still some veteran leadership they're down five the ball back to Fresno State Carr with the handoff straight ahead running and the run game for Fresno State has not been particularly dynamic Quezada with a short game the standard run game traditional run game has not been effective for them uh, they need to get the ball outside in the hands of those playmakers at receiver. That's the running game for them. Second and nine for the Bulldogs. Carr looks middle, and the pass is caught there. So a good catch going down to the ground. The tight end, Marcel Jensen, who has really improved as his career has gone on. Talk about range. I mean, he's a big guy that also can catch the football and they spread him out. He can also block in turn interior alignment. He's 6'6", 270. Third and four. Carr back to pass. With time, the throw. He's got his man, and the pass is incomplete. And not a receiver. The running back downfield, Quezada, and he just could not quite hang on to the ball. Pretty tough. He, he, great effort by him. He is... He's actually caught several passes tonight. This would just test his range just a little bit. And running backs aren't known for those 20 yard down the field catches. Well, Mike, it is interesting that the freshman Janarian Grant is going back to receive this punt again for Rutgers. We saw the good, the 100 yard touchdown on the kickoff return from Grant, but he's also made two mistakes in the punt game. Yeah, and the first, second one was a physical mistake. The third one was a mental mistake. He should not have come up and tried to attack that ball. Good angled punt and a fair catch. He holds on to it securely. 
So Rutgers will get the ball back. Scarlet Knights coming back on offense. We get a chance to remind you NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta on Sunday at 7 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. The Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta Sunday at 7 Eastern. So the Scarlet Knights back on the field, down 5, 232 to go, third quarter. About time for a big play from Rutgers. It's about their modus operandi. Every other series, big play. Every second series, big play. They've had some very big ones in this game. They had a 20 to 7 lead. They will hand it off right side running. James, big hole, 40. Here comes a big play, 50 with the acceleration to the 30. He's going to be dragged down from behind, but inside the 20, Mike Bellotti said, time for the big play. And what do they do? They dialed it right up. Well, as I said, they are getting more push from their offensive line. They are staying on blocks, doing a great job of sticking on men. And James is finding the holes, using his speed and acceleration to get to the outside. The Fresno State defense is starting to be a little bit porous versus the run. 55-yard carry there for Paul James. P.J. having a huge game. Nova gets away from the initial rush. Flushed out to the right. He throws end zone, and the pass is off the hands of the receiver incomplete. Yeah, it's too bad. He had two guys, and I'm not sure he where the ball is going, but the guy got a chance to catch this one. It's a great play by Gary to keep the play alive right there in the hands and just not great concentration at that point. Yeah, the redshirt freshman, Ruhan Peel, who has made a couple of nice catches in this game. That was a touchdown, though, and they didn't capitalize. The pitch play, James gets through that initial tackler, and James tackled just inside the five. Down to the two, Deron Smith saved the touchdown there. The All-American candidate with a heck of a tackle, but another big run for Paul James. 13 more yards for him, and he needs a breather. Absolutely a saving tackle, and right now the front seven of the Fresno State defense is getting blocked. They are not able to get off blocks, and James is getting a chance to get a full head of steam going in the secondary. He's got 16 carries, 179 yards. He had had five career carries coming into this game. High formation, fake handoff, Nova throwing, and he throws it out of the back of the end zone incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown. I don't know that he was out of the pocket. Yeah. And I don't see a receiver in the area. They may have called grounding right here. Wow. That would be a huge mistake by a veteran quarterback. Holding. Offense. Oh. Number 28. Senior penalty. First day. So it wasn't that, but it was still a big mistake by Rutgers. Another penalty against the Scarlet Knights. It's, it's been a big part of the story of this game. Yeah, you can't shoot yourself to the foot in the red zone. You've got to score touchdowns when you get down there, especially in a game like this where Fresno State can score so quickly. You can't pass up opportunities like this. First and goal from the two is a lot different than first and goal from the 12. These are what you call self-inflicted wounds. Fake handoff, rolling left, Nova. He's going to throw to the end zone, and that one again is incomplete. Very nice play fake, but it did not fool a secondary. Fresno State secondary is staying at home, covering the receivers as they come down the field, giving Nova not a lot of people open uh, other than when he scrambled in the first play. He's throw, had to throw the ball away because of great coverage from Fresno State. Second a goal now, still at the 12. That penalty just is looming so large at the moment. Rutgers was two yards away from going back in front as we near the end of the third quarter at Bulldog Stadium. Receiver in motion. Huggins is back in the game, and he fumbles the handoff, still has a hole. Huggins inside the five, still going, and down inside the two. Wow, from a near disaster to a big game. <laughs> Yeah, actually the, the slight pause might have helped him a little bit there. Here you see the ball sort of bouncing around. He stops, I think everybody else stops, and the whole wide for him all of a sudden. It's like the parting of the Red Sea, or the White Sea. Just like they drew it up, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. So Best third and goal. Plan. And now almost back to the spot where they started this first and goal. 
Huggins still in, so no. Paul James, he got banged up on this drive. Sprint out right, throw, caught, end zone, touchdown. And another one for Brandon Coleman, who has racked up the touchdowns in his Rutgers career. He's got one here. The Scarlet Knights lead 29-28. He got very wide open there. I'm not sure how. It was either a great move or somebody got picked or slipped there, but tremendous. He is such a tough guy to cover down there because you can always just throw the alley-oop. He can move. He can retrace his steps inside and out of breaks. Really amazing. Well, you see the kicker, Federico, running off the field. So with a one-point lead nearing the end of the third quarter, Rutgers has decided to go for two. Which makes sense. Two-point lead doesn't do much good for you. Well, and still no James, who's been the star running back. You'd like to have him on the field in a spot like this. This is probably going to some type of pass or delayed sprint out. Uh, they're going to spread the field. Nova, he's going to take it himself, and he's in. Two points for Rutgers as Gary Nova watched the hole open up and then shot right through. Nice execution. That was a design quarterback draw. They obviously had seen something and uh, were ready to go. Great execution. Watch this. You can see the line step down, then they block out. He pump fakes, steps inside. They're double teaming all the way down the field. Nice job, nice execution. Gary Nova right now making a lot of plays, both with his feet, but really mostly with his mind and his arm. Yeah, the junior has got a lot of experience. He was the starter for every game last year when Rutgers won nine games, shared the Big East Conference Championship. So you get that quarterback experience coming back, even when you go on the road in the opener, Rutgers was feeling pretty confident. Well, you know, and he's the leader of a team that won a share of the conference championship last year. I mean, they they feel pretty good about themselves, and I think everybody thought they lost too much talent, but he's saying, wait a second, I'm back. I'm going to be better this year. Well, I'm impressed by this performance from Rutgers. Still a quarter plus to go, but they did lose a lot of talent. Seven players drafted, 14 signed in the NFL. Gary Nova, who is the leader now on this team, 24-0 as a starter in high school for the power Don Bosco prep. He won his first career start against Pitt, sort of announced his presence in the Rutgers program, sort of shared the job initially, took over as full-time starter last year, threw 22 touchdowns and led that 9-4 season. Yeah, and he's coming of age, and right now he knew this was going to be a big stage tonight opposite Derek Carr, and he's living up to that opportunity. Well, not out of bounds. The line drive kick and brought back to the 20, and then the tackle there, Dylan Root. You know, with the exception of the fumble where Rutgers lost the punt, I would agree with you in your observation. Rutgers is playing better on special teams. They seem to be hungrier or maybe they're playing more of their athletes i'm not sure what it is maybe when you have a travel squad uh you know at home you have to play everybody try to play everybody on the road you're going to have to play your starter sometimes on special teams so that might be why they appear to be a little quicker a little more hungry on special teams yeah interesting point fresno state they pride themselves on good special teams and they have gotten outplayed in that phase so Derek Carr back on the field, back down. Wild game back and forth. The quick hitter to the right side and the catch and a gain out to the 30 for Josh Harper. And that was very important. There was no help. They were blitzing on that play. Nobody in center field. Had they missed that tackle, that would have been a touchdown. And they spotted him back at the 29 down there. So it's second down and three. Quick snap, handoff, right side running. First down outside to about the Bulldogs 35 yard line. There's a theory with passing teams, you pass to set up the run. You get people playing on their heels a little bit. That running play was a result of the pass on first down. Waller got the first down. They fake it to him this time. The throw and the pass was knocked out of the hands of the receiver. They're going to call it incomplete. And I think that's the right call. Big hit on Josh Harper. And the ball popped loose, but an incompletion. Very fortunate because had he caught it, possessed it, and taken a step. End of the third quarter. So the big hit, and maybe even a little closer than it looked on first glance. The third quarter is over. Fresno State, they've got a fight on their hands. Rutgers has traveled here to the Central Valley of California, and we've had some big plays, excitement on both sides at the end of the third. Rutgers 31, Fresno State 28.
Start of the fourth quarter here at Fresno State. 31-28. Rutgers has the lead. Big plays all around. Paul James, what a third quarter. 164 rush yards in the third quarter alone. Derek Carr has been tremendous for Fresno State. So Carr back to pass, right side, and complete on second down, second and ten beginning this fourth quarter. And it's going to be third down with a flag down on the play. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. So, third. Second down and 15 after the penalty. That one is caught short. Another flag thrown. A missed tackle. Big hit near the 45 yard line, near the first down mark for Martez Waller. We'll speak. I think that one's coming back. I think uh, Derek's pulling back. I think it's going to be a holding of some type. Well, maybe not. Well, let's see. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 91. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Okay, that's a that's a dangerous thing in a pass rush a lot of times a, a defensive player will try to get the push to get the offensive lineman off and the hands slide up and go into the face mask. So that was a big call there. They may have declined it and taken the play. I know, I'm not sure what here. I, I thought that the spot was short of the first down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> First and ten, Fresno State. Carr. Back to pass. And the ball is caught after the little juggle for a short gain, maybe three yards with the forward progress for Martez Waller. It's a great tackle. He gets it's a one on one with the entire field to make a move. That's great defense. Second down and seven. Derek Carr. Swings it out, incomplete. Again, trying to throw to that back, coming out of the backfield. And so it's third down coming up. I don't see a sense of urgency with Fresno State. When they play slow, they just don't tend to play as hungry or as hard or as fast. I would love to see him go up tempo again, ASAP. So big play here early in the fourth quarter. Third down and seven, Rutgers on defense, Fresno State. Back to pass, pressure, the throw, caught by Harper, and tackled short of the first down. Good team defense from the Scarlet Knights. You know, one reason Fresno State may be going slow is to give their defense some rest on the sideline, too. Sometimes you go too fast, you go three and out. That defense is getting pushed around a little bit. And how about this one? They've already had two big fourth down conversions on the night. One for a touchdown, one in the middle of a touchdown drive. They're going for it here. Fourth and a long three. Survey time. Want to see what the defense was in. Now they got the play called. The snap, and it's a punt. So Derek Carr, he could do it all. And that one will be downed inside the 20 yard line at about the 17. So they use Carr as the punter. Rutgers gets the ball back. They lead by three. Thirteen twenty to go, fourth quarter at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno. 31-28, Rutgers has the lead. Fresno State, Mike, lots more first downs. They've run more plays, but Rutgers has the advantage. Why? The big plays. Just explosive plays. The kick return, the big reception, and then Paul James just went crazy in the third quarter. I mean, 160-some yards of offense just running the ball. 
Right. Give it to him. I'd keep giving it to him. Yeah, he was out. He's hungry. Out for some plays. He's back in now for Rutgers as the tailback on first and ten. Nova hands it to James, right side running. He's got a nice burst, and he also has some power, too. He carries that one across the 20 and all the way out to about the 23. So a pretty nice pickup of five yards when there didn't seem to be much of a hole. He makes it look pretty effortless. He finds those seams, and he's got good enough speed, but then he can lower his shoulder and, and carry the 10.9 yards of carry. I keep giving it to him. For, for Fresno State, go up tempo. For Rutgers, give, PJ, give Paul James the ball. Pretty good coaching, man. Excellent. I can see why you succeeded for so many years in the business. <laughs> yeah. Well, you saw it coming. Stacked up right around the 25. So a pretty short gain that time of two yards. Carl Mickelson, the middle linebacker with a big hit, brings up third down. It's a big third down now. Third three or four. Got it either or. You know, honestly, you could do anything in the playbook with that type of down and distance. You're on the right hash, which might predispose you to go to the field unless you get single coverage into the boundary. Rutgers 3 of 11 on third down tries in this game. In the fourth quarter, they've got third and three. Nova back to pass, looking middle, pressured. He throws over the top, and it falls short, incomplete. And the pressure, I think, got to Gary Nova that time. Absolutely. Great job of pressing off that short side. He wanted to hold the ball just a little bit longer because the receiver was breaking open. Couldn't do it. The pressure got to him on that play. That's a big stop. Fresno State needed that. They need to get the ball back. I mean, it is interesting, Mike. Fresno State has not had a sack in this game, and they've hardly pressured Nova that time. Finally, they got some heat on the quarterback, and they forced the incompletion. Low snap, but a pretty good-looking punt. Burst back to receive, and he's going to bring it back to the 40. Gets to the left side, 45-50. Into Rutgers territory to the 40. Still on his feet. Breaking tackles. Coming back middle. He's finally... Dragged down. He actually lost a couple yards there, but incredible effort from Isaiah Burst, the senior, who is having a very big night. So, Burst, he made something happen on special teams. The Bulldogs at home in the fourth quarter. They're down by three. Fresno Bulldog Stadium, Derek Carr and his Fresno State offense will be headed back on the field down in the fourth quarter, 31-28. Rutgers leads at 11.39 to go. Tell you what, a lot of scoring in every single quarter. This, this game will go right down to the wire. Well, Derek Carr having a big statistical game, but Rutgers, the team that has the lead, back on defense, great field position after the big punt return for Isaiah Burrs. The give up the middle, the handoff for a gain of maybe four yards on first down. Josh Kizada making his Fresno State debut tonight, a BYU transfer. And he's had some nice moments. Going back to up tempo here. The hitter out onto the left side and a good gain. Burst again, who has just been so dynamic all evening long. And they are going big time up tempo. They have different versions of up tempo. And this is where they've been so dangerous in this game. The quick snap and the fake handoff. A little pump fake. He's got his man. The great cut into the end zone. Touchdown, Devontae Adams. He made it look easy. Devontae Adams, once he catches this ball, he just sidesteps. And part of the thing is the tempo puts the defense on his heels. It isolates defenders one-on-one -on -one in the secondary and allows the Fresno State players to make one-on-one -on -one plays. 31 seconds, and Fresno State goes 40 yards. A 20-yard touchdown from Carr to Adams, the freshman cessation last year. And this pass attack for Fresno State is tough to stop. Yeah, this is just uh, you score, I'll score, I'm going to score next. Here you can see again, nice catch right here. But then just the vision, just sidestep. And the, the DB has to come from a ways away and sell out to try to get there. But that's all because of Derek Carr's throw on the move so quick. The ball finishes. He sees.
he's that underneath defender sitting in between. Great job. Now look at the numbers for the receiving core. The top three wide receivers, two already in double figures with catches. That had never happened in a game in Fresno State history. And Devontae Adams is about to make it three for the first time. Odds ever. are they're going to have three. This is this may break some records for everything: receptions, completions, the whole thing. And they're only ahead by four points. Yeah. So the wide receivers get the ball from their fifth-year senior quarterback Derek Carr, who has gone through such a a trying time. Carr, who's the leader of this team, the preseason conference player of the year on offense, had his first son born about three weeks ago, and his son had to have emergency surgery almost right away. Had two surgeries. He spent the entire fall camp going back and forth to the neonatal intensive care unit. His son is back home now and is doing well, and he's playing the first game of 2013 and looking like he. Took every snap during fall camp. And I'm sure that he's playing for his son just a little bit too because all the complications that young man went through and him at the hospital every night to see him. He's very, very pleased that one, he's playing football and two, that his little guy is going to be okay. Uh, he said his son's a tough kid. I think Derek Carr is a pretty tough kid himself. Well, another one of those short kickoffs. That's just become the strategy for Fresno State now when they've kicked the ball deep. Sam Bergen made the catch there. That's the fourth time he's made a catch on a kickoff in this game. You give up one kickoff return, that's enough for the day. Yeah. That's enough for the year. 100 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Tied the game at 7 to 7. We have had six lead changes, so it's been a total back and forth game. Under the lights here, late night college football on opening night 2013. And two teams that have some big dreams this season. Both these teams feel like they've got a chance for a BCS bowl berth. If Paul James is still strong enough, I, you watch him going off the edge, right outside between tackle and in, because he can de develop enough speed and stretch the defense a little bit. But that's where he's been the most effective tonight. Well, they can still run the ball. They got a long time to go in this game. James is in there. Two backs alongside Nova. It's getting loud, and here comes a penalty flag. The play clock went to zero. The Liam game. Off it. I don't know if that was on the right quarterback the or the center. Expiring. The quarterback time, kept clapping his hands Rugby. as if he wanted the ball, but that may have just been his way of communicating a play change. He's got to see that clock. He's a veteran. He needs to understand that and see that one of the things you do with a quarterback in the foot when you're at a way stadium You point out where are the 25 second clocks know that look at it see it We talk about it before the game. No, they're talking about it now while they do let's send it down to Lewis Johnson Lewis Well, Dave as Rutgers tries to find a way to climb back in this game They've got some injury issues uh, a few moments ago. We saw Robert Jones on the turf He is now on the trainers table. They're working out his right calf. They're rubbing it out He looks to be in some pain Earlier, I noticed uh, Jonathan Aiken, or you guys saw him, the backup safety is on crutches. No word as to what his injury is, but he's clearly out of the game. And then from the first half, Andre Sybil had ice on his right elbow, just saw him in street clothes, so he is clearly done for the night. Well, that's a starting offensive lineman for Rutgers, their right guard out for the game. The Rutgers getting a little beat up. They did get the timeout, so no penalty, but still out of the timeout, loud again. On first and ten, Nova fake handoff and kind of a busted play, and he's going down. That looked almost like a quarterback run or a shovel pass that didn't develop correctly. Great pressure from the Fresno State. And take a look here. It's hard to say what that play was, actually. <laughs> it wasn't good, we yeah. know that. And out of the timeout, that will make Rod Prince, no. the first-year offensive coordinator for Rutgers, very unhappy. Yeah. You have to burn a timeout. You huddle up. You talk about it. You come out, and you lose 10 yards. Second and 20. James from behind. Tackle. No gain. Donovan Lewis. Yeah, it's not fun dialing up third and 20 plays, I'll just tell you. <laughs> Having been there, done that a few times. It's very hard down to convert. But you got to try to throw vertical seams, or if you can get a one on one route, a double move route like the post corner has worked for them early in the game. Derek Carr and the offense, they got these fans going, and now it's getting louder and louder. The play clock winding down again. Third and 20. 
Nova, a little wide receiver screen, and even the talented Brandon Coleman can't do anything with that one. Shannon Edwards with the tackle, and Rutgers goes backwards. They'll have to punt. You've got to hit that screen going inside. It's like blind faith, and he unfortunately wanted to play and maybe get to the outside, but he wasn't going to get any help, and he negated the blocking angles of his offensive lineman coming out to help him. So that was not a highlight offensive series for Rutgers. And they'll have to punt the ball, Garrett Swanson. And Fresno State's going to get good field position out of this, regardless of whether they get a return or not. And Nick Marsh, the punter, a low line drive kick. It'll bounce, and it'll be taken there. Another missed tackle burst to midfield, and he's still on his feet. This guy is one tough fun returner, Isaiah Burst. And he gets the Bulldogs to midfield. That Fresno State offense will come back on the field when we come back to Bulldog State and the momentum on the side of the Dogs, 35-31. Derek Carr and the Bulldogs offense back on the field, 35-31. That's the Fresno State lead, 8.54 to go. Fourth quarter, we've had six lead changes. But the Rutgers defense may well be wearing down, and the field position has not helped Rutgers because Fresno State's been in great field position these last several possessions. You get the ball here at midfield, you expect at least an opportunity for a field goal and get some points on the board, if not, the touchdown. Oh, there's Adams with his 10th catch. So that means three different wide receivers have 10-plus catches in this game. There is a flag down on the play, so we'll see if the catch stands. After the play, personal foul, late hit, 72 offense, 15-yard penalty, second down. So it is a completion, but then Austin Wentworth with the personal foul penalty moves the Bulldogs way back. Yeah, he's a veteran. Yeah, you don't want that. That's... The line to gain was made the 15-yard penalty, first down. So they get the first down, then apply the right. penalty after that. So it's still first down. It's first down, a new first down for Fresno State, but backwards from where the play ended. It's a dead ball foul in which they actually have a first down but lost four yards. <laughs> Not the way you want a first down to go. And Wentworth, who's a preseason first team all Mountain West left tackle with a mental mistake there. A little pump fake, and the pass over the middle is incomplete. Well, he tried to go to Adams again. The point we were making, Mike, about the wide receivers, that's three different receivers for Fresno State now with 10 or more catches in this game. And I believe that uh, Derek has broken his record for attempts and completions now in this game, and certainly there's more to come. Yeah, there's still 8.37 to go, which the tempo of this game means about five more possessions for Fresno State. Here's a slant. Adams breaks a tackle, goes outside, and then finally gets wrapped up and dragged down right near midfield. So it'll be third down, maybe seven to go. Lou Toller made the tackle. These receivers put so much pressure on Rutgers because you have to be so perfect. You have to pursue and tackle well in space. Well, now the pass caught over the middle. Harper with the catch, and the ball came out there at the end of the play. They're saying fumble, and Rutgers has the ball back. The official right there called it. Uh, we couldn't quite see how it came out. We'll take on the a field. look and see. It's a completed pass, fumble, and recovery by the defense. First down. I don't think the knee was down before the ball popped out. I think you're right. Based on that view, let's take a look. Ah, the left oh. knee might have been down again. Yeah, maybe yeah. so. It's, yeah, hard to tell. I think they will take a look at that one. Let's see if that knee got down. Yeah, yeah. well, it's close. Is that, is that the, no, that's, yeah, no, I think he was down again. Well, the ball's maybe starting to be punched out, but that knee was definitely down on the ground. The Rutgers would have loved to have just run up and run a play, but they're going to review. <laughs> play. Is under review. Yeah, let's see if we can take another look at it. It's hard. There's a couple angles that might show his knee in the ball. I think right there he's in control of the ball and his knee is down. Well, let's see. I'm not sure we can see the ball or not. I mean, that's the problem. You can yeah. definitely see the knee well, down. And the call is a fumble on the field, yeah. so we have to remember that. 
So the evidence has to be indisputable to overturn the call. So that the ball's not out right there. The I think he still is, has it. He has it, and his knee is down. So I would say that to me is enough proof that it was not a fumble. But that, it'll, it'll be a close call. It was very close. Toller came in with that punch, and we've had several of these. The first half was littered with video reviews. And they were not necessarily easy calls. They had no. to take a lot of looks, and this one may be similar. And a couple, and at least one was overturned. So let me see it again. Now Fresno State got the benefit of a call earlier when replay and overturned it, a call. And it was similar because it looked like the ball was out, but his knee was down first, and this may be the same situation. Yeah, that was with Carr, the quarterback, earlier tonight. This time with Josh Harper, the junior wide receiver, who's had a big game. Kyle Flood, the Rutgers head coach. Very interested party. Ball security is what the Fresno State coaches talk about all the time, especially because so many people handle the ball in this offense. Uh, one last look. We'll see. That's a pretty good look. The question is whether that ball is out when the knee is down. Or yeah. There it was hard to tell. That looked a little bit more like it could have been out on its way out. Well, I think it's very, very close, but... I thought the knee was down and he still had not had the ball punched away. But we'll see if that's what the replay says. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Per se. Well, and I think I think what we were just discussing there, Mike, it was just so close you couldn't yeah. quite tell if the ball was moving before the knee came down. Right, and I didn't think there was enough actually to overturn the call on the field because we see the ball, but we can't tell if it's, it looks like it might have been the act of being dislodged. Yeah, it's almost like his own knee started to move the football before the punch even came in. The Rutgers gets the call go their way. First down, Scarlet Knights downfield, and the pass was tipped up and intercepted. <laughs> What an interception from Derrod Smith, the All-American candidate. What a great play. You think there's a reason he's the pick for the defensive player of the year preseason? He's going to make those things happen. That's a great break on the ball. Nice job. And all you have to have is one foot in bounds in college. Great tip. Great break. Got both feet in bounds. Whoa. Foot in bounds. Moving on the field is an interception inbound first down. They won't need to see this one again, I hope. Come on. I don't think Guys, so. let's go. You can take one quick look and know not just an interception, about as athletic of an interception as you'd ever want to see. And great time for it. Unfortunately, he sort of telegraphs. He looks, 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 and the underneath defense gets a chance to get in the path or fly to the ball. Got the tip, and he breaks on it perfectly. Gets his feet down. He knows it. Everybody knows it. So okay, don't blink here because the ball may change again. Come well, on. he had a turnover after a review. Another turnover on the very next play. And now a handoff, and the ball's loose. And did we have it again? You bet. Unbelievable. <laughs> I thought you were kidding. I wasn't. Why coaches get gray? I'll tell you what. First games and ball security. We just talked about that 30 seconds ago. And you just have to be every little thing. And as people get tired, sometimes the snap doesn't come up the same way. Sometimes the quarterback hangs on to it. Just if it's the read zone, it's just a lot of things. But you got to secure the football. What a sloppy play on the exchange. Third consecutive play that ends with a turnover. So Rutgers gets it, they give it back, and they get it back. And now the Scarlet Knights are well inside Fresno State territory. The result of all those turnovers is yeah. they marched it right down the field. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll start at the Bulldogs 33, first and 10 under eight minutes to go. Nova back to pass, a pump fake, and he swings it out. Dangerous pass, but caught, and turning it quickly upfield, the star of the night, Paul James. Very dangerous pass, because I'm not even sure that was a pass. That might have been a lateral, and had it been tipped or even intercepted, oh, my gosh, he's got to look. Gary Nova got to keep his eyes just a little bit more move on, the, on a swivel. Well, I'm glad he held on. We don't have to review that one, because that one was going to be close. That was going to be a while. Gain of about eight, second and two, inside the 25. 
Handoff to the up back and a first down to the 20 there for Rutgers. And that's James again. He set up a little closer to the line of scrimmage and gets the first down. What a game he's having. He is, and they're going to feed. I, I said, when a running back carries the ball and has that kind of success, they get a, a euphoria going. It's like that runner's high. You just you want to carry the ball more. It doesn't weigh very much. It's just a little football. Give me that ball. I'm hungry. Now they're going to reset the uh, play clock. Please start both clocks on that signal. Thank you. It was a first down. Paul James, PJ, 192 yards tonight for Rutgers. Obviously, Fresno State, they were great. I think they were second in the nation in pass defense last year, but they need to shore up their run defense. Four point lead for the Bulldogs. The first down total still lopsided, but Rutgers has a chance with a touchdown to go back in front. Nova pressure, and he throws. It is caught for a loss. So the catch was made. But they lose two yards. Nova, in an almost panic mode, got rid of the ball. Peel made the reception. I'm not sure why Rutgers is going to drop that passing game right now. I, I would think play action would be better to move the pocket slightly. They, they're a sitting target in the pocket. Uh, use, utilize Nova's legs to get outside, give him a run pass option. Well, that's a good question, considering all the success they've had with James. He's in the backfield now on second and long. Back to pass, Nova. Lots of time, pump fake. And Nova's going to take off to the 15, cuts it upfield, and gets tackled short of the first down. But a nice gain. He got almost 10 yards there on the scramble to set up a third and short. 13 yard line. Very manageable. Uh, obviously, it's still just a pure drop back pass. Didn't get a lot of pressure. He had time to survey the field. Everybody was covered. Great coverage down the field that allowed him to sneak out. He, he, he built it. He tried to create an opening for a receiver by. Getting a defender to come up on him didn't work. Third down has not been the best down for Rutgers. Three of 13. Short drop, the quick throw, it's incomplete. So they threw it again. And Duran Smith, who's making big plays down for Fresno State, knocked it away. It's fourth down, and his record's going to go for it. They've got to go for it. A three pointer still leaves him behind. I would believe they'll have to go for the touchdown here. Well, Thinking it was four down territory to me that makes it even more surprising that they didn't try to run the ball on third They did not now. It's fourth and three I think they have trust we talked about that earlier when it went for fourth and one uh, at their own 40 yard line Under center Nova Play clock down to two back to pass for the end zone and it's caught Touchdown Rutgers! Leonte Carew with his second touchdown reception of the game, and Rutgers goes back in front 37 35. One on one coverage, he found the right matchup, put it where only he could catch it, and Carew comes up with a second touchdown catch of the night. Pretty awesome. What a breakout game he's having. That yeah. young man is having himself a night. He had never had a catch before tonight. He played on special teams, he's becoming a star. At receiver, the extra point, and snuck inside that left upright. So a three-point lead for Rutgers, and we have had just a heck of a game here tonight at Bulldog Stadium. One of the things you think about when you're on the road is you go for the win. You don't go for the tie. Go for the knockout punch. Rutgers back up 38-35. ABC will there be a punt in that game who knows we've hardly had punts in this one This has been a wild night in Fresno There'll Be a lot of offense in that uh, Georgia Clemson game. I'm not sure any more than what we've seen tonight and They still have 532 to play in the fourth quarter Rutgers has gone back in front 38 35 We've had seven lead changes tonight Root comes up and takes the ball at the five, picks his way forward to the 20, and is stopped at about the 22-yard line. Kickoff coverage has been good for Rutgers all game long. Looking ahead, Rutgers, if they can hold 
the Bulldogs here and get the ball back. Say with about four minutes to go, you will see what I call the four-minute offense. Rutgers is going to try to run the clock out of their head, but they've got to keep the ball, move the chains. Be interesting to see how they do that. They may have to still mix in, run and pass, but obviously Fresno State has different ideas. They want to get the ball in the end zone. Well, Fresno State has been good on opening day, opening night in the recent past, but they haven't played many teams as good as this Rutgers team. There's Adams on the left side, cuts his way forward and near the first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. I think about a yard short, the tackle by Lorenzo Waters. The thing about the equal distribution to the receivers is each of them is still hungry. They're not tired. They seem to have a bounce in their step when they touch the ball. Now another catch by Adams, and he just barely barely made it to that first down mark. I think they will give him the first down. Lou Toller, who's been everywhere in this second half, wrapped him up. We'll see where they spot the ball, and I think they did give him a first down. I think you're right, and I, I think the real key is Fresno State's got to get a minimum of a field goal out of this drive to tie it up. Obviously, they'd love a touchdown. Derek Carr back to pass, swings it out left side, caught, and a tackle at about the 35 after a gain of two. Josh Quezada, the running back, with a reception. And plenty of time. They're not really in their warp speed mode. They're just going up tempo. Carr, another pass attempt, a little pump fake now, flushed out left side. He's going to throw down the field, and it is a jump ball and a catch inbounds. Devontae Adams, spectacular first down into Rutgers territory. Great job by Derek Carr. Pump fake sort of froze the defense, sprinted outside the pocket, bought time, and then put the ball right where his receiver could catch it. One foot in college. Very good completion. Yeah, excellent catch by the star wideout, Devontae Adams. Now Carr again on the move, and he's going to flip that one out of bounds incomplete. Great job protection-wise. He's had a lot of time here. He's really not under any pressure, but Rutgers is playing more zone, or they're not rushing a lot. I think they don't want to give up the big play to recognize how dangerous these receivers are in space. Three-point lead for Rutgers. Fresno State on the move. Second down, the slant. Harper catches, turns it back outside, tries to use that stiff arm, but a tough play there. And Thomas pushes... Harper out of bounds. Ian Thomas has had an excellent Rutgers debut tonight. It's third down. The real question is, after this, do you, if you don't get the first down, you kick the field goal and tie it up. Swing pass, left side. It's tipped up and incomplete, and they are going to have that decision. That looked like an easy pitch and catch. Fresno State does that over and over again. Intended for Greg Watson, and he could not hang on. And I think they're sending out... Harder. Let's see what they decide to do. I think they're sending out the field goal team to try to tie the game. This is an interesting decision. You got the true freshman, Colin McGuire from Austin, Texas, trying to tie the game with 3.53 to go. Wynn looks like it's going to be at his back, helping him a little bit. He has a big leg. 47 yard kick. It is on the way. And the kick is perfect with plenty of leg to spare. What a debut for Colin McGuire. And that field goal makes Tim DeRuder's decision look good. Fresno State ties the game at 38. And I'll tell you what, that's a great kick because that's a pressure kick to tie a big game. That'll pay dividends for both the kicker, the coach, and the team. Much as we talked about, when you have that kind of a success on a first game basis, big pressure situation, you can take that with you to the bank the rest of the season. And the head coach said, yeah, I knew what I was doing. The true freshman, he had the leg. A lot of push-ups tonight. A lot of points on the board. 38, 38, 348 to go. That kick was pretty good. That was effortless. Now, that young man had a really nice delivery. Looked a little bit like some of my better golf swings. That's exactly what I thought, right? As he <laughs> I knew you were going to contact with that. the ball. The true freshman kicker for South Carolina had a great debut today. Helped to the Gamecocks get a win against North Carolina. In the game that started this full afternoon and evening of college football on ESPN. Well, Rutgers is getting the ball back. He's been the return specialist. You wouldn't necessarily expect it. But Sam Bergen, they've been using those pop-up kicks. We'll see if they try that strategy again. 
Rutgers already has a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the game. That came way back in the first quarter. Wire runs up and they do it exactly the same. It'll be taken though this time by the deep man and there's going to be a return. Try to get to the outside to the 30 and a spin move to the 35 yard line. And that's that freshman Janarian Grant. He's got a lot of talent and a lot of speed. So Rutgers gets the ball back. Look at the quarterback numbers. Gary Nova has been effective but Derek Carr 50 of 69 418 yards. Uh, I'm not sure what to say on that. That's off the charts. I'm not sure charts go that high. 50 completions and 69 attempts. Wow. I mean, remember this. Rutgers now, they're replacing some talent on defense, that's for sure. This was the fourth ranked total defense in college football last year. Number four in the country. And Derek Carr and the Bulldogs have just lit them up through the air. But Gary Nova and Rutgers still in position to pull off what would be an upset. They've got 65 yards to go to the end zone. A handoff, and Fresno State knew it was coming. James dropped for the loss. Nico Mata, who's made some big plays for that Bulldogs defense. Sometimes it's surprising what can motivate a team getting fired up. Just a long field goal. You beat your guy in an inside rush and make the play. They have been going to that type of off tackles, a steady diet. Fresno State got there before the running back did. And remember, Mike, what Lewis told us, Andre Civil, the right guard, hurt and out of the game. A starter for Rutgers, and that may be starting to hurt the Scarlet Knights. Pass over the middle, and what a catch, reaching up high. The tackle short of the first down mark, but a heck of a play. And Leonte Carew, the sophomore from Edison, New Jersey, another big play for him. I like that young man. I'll tell you what, he, he'll go over the middle and catch the ball. He'll go deep and catch it. He's really doing a great job. This is a great sticky hands kind of thing. Reach up over the top and hang on to the football. Brings up a very manageable third down, though. That's the other First of the foul. Roughing the pass here. Wow. Defense number 27. Tap that on 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Okay, that's something that you can't do. You have to talk to your players about that. The, the, the completion is one thing. You got a chance to stop them on third down, but that type of play at the end, tax on 15 and immediate field position and momentum. Back to Rutgers. The 14 yard catch, 15 yards on the penalty, almost a 30 yard play. Rutgers moves into Fresno State territory. They're down to the 43. They need a field goal to go ahead. Tie game, fourth quarter. The short reception there and the tackle right at the 40 yard line. That's the fullback, Michael Burton, with the catch. Let's look back at what that roughing the passer penalty was. Well, that's that's so late. That's with the head too. I, I'll tell you what. He's lucky that it wasn't more. Yeah, that uh, with the new targeting rules, that one had a yeah. chance to be one of those kind of penalties. Donovan Lewis strike with the crown of the helmet. It's so late too. That's that's a shame. Terrible penalty. Second and eight for Rutgers. Not quite in field goal range, but they've got a kicker who's got a big leg too. Nova delayed handoff and nowhere to go for James. It's a loss back to the 45. Yeah, and they're getting beat inside up front. Uh, it could be at the right guard position. I'm not sure. Chris Muller, I know, was battling civil all the time. They weren't sure who was going to start there. But uh, obviously, they're right now, either Fresno State is very fired up, jumping the snap counter, just trying to make plays. But Rutgers has to come big, up big on this third and long. Third and 12. Rutgers just 3 of 14 on third down conversions. A minute and a half to go, and it's loud. Coming with his own blitz. Nova gets it off. The pass is incomplete. There was contact. Here comes the flag. Carl Mickelson, the middle linebacker, sort of got tangled up. It's going to be another huge penalty against the Bulldogs. Yeah, they're coming with zone pressure on the outside. Brought the safety. Pass number three. Defense, number 43. Automatic. Go stand. And unfortunately, the defensive player grabbed and almost tackled the receiver before he touched the ball. And that one could cost Fresno State the game. A minute 25 to go. The Bulldogs do have all three of their timeouts, so it's not like Rutgers can just go into total stall mode and try for a field goal to win it. But no, but they want to take everything they can off the clock, and they'd be willing to settle for a, a field goal with two seconds left, I guarantee you. 
Nova in the shotgun. So they're not being conservative here. They're going for the end zone. The pass is incomplete out of bounds. Ooh, that was close, I'll tell you what. What an effort there. And Gary Nova, he thinks that was a touchdown. He wants to see that one again. I think it was Pratt what, number zero. Take a look. He passed out of bounds. Second down. Let's take a look because I'm sure they're reviewing it right now. That was Carew again. Well, he, when he, wow. Wow, what an effort from the sophomore Leonte Carew. Nova is just convinced. I'm not sure they should have tried to score that quickly, to tell you the truth. With Fresno State, I mean, I would take a little bit more time and move it down there. They're going to review this yeah. play there. Oh, well, no, Rutgers calls a timeout, which could mean that they are want challenge. to challenge prior to the snap And prior to Rutgers calling timeout, the previous play will be reviewed. Now, the head referee does not say that the play was challenged. Well, that is very, very close. Leonte Carew, he's already got two touchdowns in this game. Let's see, does he have it there? He's got it. It's a touchdown. I think right he's there. got it right I, there. I'm trying to figure out why it's not a touchdown already. His foot is in the end zone. One foot is control of the ball. The other foot does not have to come down. Now, did he have possession? That might be the question. Well, let's take I, a look. I don't know if we can see it again to see how clean the catch was. No, I mean, we, we need to see that moment. The foot planted on the ground. The ball is in his hands. Then the foot comes back up off the ground, and he gets shoved out of bounds. But did he have possession with that foot down on the ground in the end zone? I don't know. Even there, the toe almost came down in bounds on the second effort. But I think the, this is our best look yeah, I at think it. This is the look, and his right foot, or is it? it no, it's his. Does he have possession right there? And then does he complete the catch all the way through the end? I think he does. I, I, I don't see it bobbling at all. Right, that's total possession. His foot has already been down in the end zone with the ball in his hands. I, I would say that's a touchdown. Wow. Now, I've been known to be an offensive coach and, and sort of think that way, but uh, we'll see. So you haven't had enough touchdowns tonight. <laughs> well, I like I like touchdowns, and I also like the opportunity to come back. Let's listen in. After review, the receiver completed the process of the catch with his left foot in bounds, resulting in a touchdown. Touchdown, Rutgers! Amazing. I'll still say this. I think they might have scored too soon. I don't know. It's, I know you always, you never turn down an opportunity for a touchdown. But the reality is if they could have gotten a few more ticks off that clock, I'd feel a little bit better. Well, how about the gambling style of Rutgers going for the end zone there when we yeah. thought they might try to just work the clock down? Leonte Carew has just had a monster performance. Now, Rutgers needs to get organized here. We've got an issue with somebody missing some player on the field. It's okay. we got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Time. Well, you got to make sure they're ready to go on this one. You cannot rush it and miss the extra point. The kick is good. So Rutgers, in dramatic fashion, in the final two minutes on the road, they have gone back in front 45-38. Now the question is, what did it take uh, Fresno State to score on that last drive of the second half? Do you know the time frame? But they have they have three timeouts in a minute 18. They've had one touchdown drive in this half of 30 seconds. They've had plenty of touchdown drives in the game of two minutes or less. The last time they scored, it took a minute 43. Okay, so they got to speed it up just a little bit if they have a chance. And then the other question is, if they get that chance to score, do they go for two to end the game or go to kick it and go overtime? Well, I hope we have to find yeah, out. I'm just, I'm just asking. As a coach, you always think ahead to the what ifs. I hope they, they have to make that decision because we've already had just a spectacular game here tonight. One of the things with Rutgers, you always worry a little bit about kicking deep, although they've had great coverage for the most part today on their kickoffs. If you squib kick it, you give them maybe a little bit more yardage and better starting position. So all those things factor in. You hope that Fresno State hopes to get a great return. Rutgers hopes to get great coverage. Well, I'm with you. Don't go conservative now. They've covered kicks so beautifully. Yeah, yeah. Just kick it deep and, and trust your special team players. That Rutgers has just dominated in that regard tonight. 
But Nick Marsh, he's got the strong leg. This has been his Rutgers debut. He played for Utah last year, fifth year transfer, eligible right away, and he's had a nice night. That's right, coming home to the Central Valley, right? Yeah, he's yeah, from, from California. Yeah. Oh, he kicks it, kind of a low line drive kick. It'll take a bounce. And Dylan Root across the 15 to the 20, cuts back 25, 30, and Root into the open, 40 to midfield. And now finally dragged from behind inside Fresno State territory into Rutgers territory. The kick return, the coverage breaks down at the very worst time for the Scarlet Knights. One minute, eight to go, but 57 yards for Dylan Root. That makes it a little bit easier to time more manageable, but that's one of the concerns you have in kicking deep is if they break a kickoff, it's just one of those things that you really are scared about as a coach. And this was a poor kick. It was very low, got there very quickly, allowed the Fresno State people to get a lot more yardage down the field before they engaged the box. And then nice run, nice return, weaving his way through traffic, finding a way, putting them in a great situation now. But make no mistake about it, this is a time for the Rutgers defense to stand up. Well, the tight end Tyler Bellia made the tackle. Leonte Carew, though, and maybe that's a cramp. I don't know. I hope so. That He's been too good a player for him, too uh, influential in this game. Has he had a spectacular night or what? Please correct the scoreboard. Rutgers has two timeouts remaining. Thank you. So the scoreboard here in Bulldog Stadium showed one Rutgers timeout. They have two timeouts remaining. Carew is still down on the field. Leonte Carew, who came into this game without a single career reception. He's a sophomore, really playing wide receiver for the first time. Four catches, 124 yards, three touchdowns. Wow. Three touchdowns. <laughs> he, he could fly home by himself. He went up to board the plane and just... And uh, I mean, I, he's just been spectacular. They're going to get him up, but I don't know that that's just a cramp. It, it may still be, but he's definitely hurting. Now, let me just set the stage here. Remember, this is three timeouts, 108 to score a touchdown. There's no kicking field goals. It's the whole world is four down territory now. And they have three timeouts, so it's very, very manageable. The field position game has been huge for Fresno State. This is the third time, Mike, that they've started from the Rutgers 40-yard line. Yeah, this is a drill you set up. Okay, we've got a minute eight. You got three timeouts. You're on the 40-yard line. Defense, got to keep them out. So Derek Carr, the fifth-year senior, has had a monster game statistically. Carr, 69 pass attempts. He's going to get number 70. He's going to get it right here. 418 yards. Unless they score in the first play, he's going to get more than 70, I guarantee you. So first and 10, Fresno State. Carr takes a snap. Here comes pass attempt number 70 down the middle and caught. Inside the 20 down to the 15, Isaiah Burst. Now Fresno State's going to score too fast. And we call Isaiah Burst the inside receiver. That's the classic route, the seam route, middle seam read for the inside receiver. He does it perfectly. On first and 10 from the 15, Carr takes that snap. He's pressured. He's throwing toward the end zone. Jump ball, and it's incomplete. Coverage over there. The pass intended for Greg Watson again, but incomplete. Second down, clock stops, 50 seconds to go. Plenty of time. They've got shots there. They have the ability to throw the ball in the end zone, underneath. You know, it's really anything that they want to do. Yeah, the clock should not be a factor. They've got their timeouts intact. Second and ten. Carr now with the play clock under 15. Changes the call. Takes that snap. Some pressure comes. And zone incomplete. Just a little bit of an overthrow intended for Burst. Okay, this puts a little bit more pressure to get a positive play here now in third and ten. You don't want to be fourth and ten. Having to get that first down to keep the ball. Yeah, with the game on the line, essentially. So two plays to get 10 yards or get in the end zone for Fresno State. Third down, Carr. Again, walks up, makes a change to the call, gets back in position. The snap. Carr, middle, incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Intended for burst again. 
And it's Garif Glosson who's had a couple of costly penalties in this game. He got flagged. And the reality is, pass is the first. Number two, defense, automatic first down. If you are beat, and he was to the inside, you might as well hold him. Do not give him the touchdown. Here you can see a distinct grab there, wrestling down, obvious automatic call. So it's first and goal, 41 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, a touchdown and an extra point away from tying the game, Fresno State. Carr spreads it out even near the goal line, throwing, end zone, and it's caught, touchdown! Josh Harper. One point game. Fresno State needs the extra point to tie, and that's how they're going to play it. Pass into first. Defense, number 24. So it is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Penalty didn't even matter. Now, unless they've dialed up a trick play out of their PAT field goal. It looks like Rutgers are getting another chance, but uh, overtime's a possibility. Yeah, well, the home team, I think, usually plays it this way. The whistles blow. Kick went through. Prior to the snap. Second charge, timeout. Rutgers. Wow. That's interesting. They, they may be wanting to set up a block because this point is crucial, and obviously they may have something they want to remind their kids about because otherwise you get the ball back, you get a good return. That timeout would have been important to have them. They get a field goal and they could win it. Oh, that timeout is huge. You got a field goal kicker who's got range. You burn one there on the extra point. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. If they block this kick, it's all worth it. It will be totally worth it. And nobody in the last few years has blocked as many kicks as Rutgers. It's something they specialize in. Sometimes, you know, and it may be to ice the kicker, too. There's a lot of there's a lot of thought and strategy going into this. Number one in college football since 2009. They sure could use one here. Fresno State needs the clean point after try. The snap was a little high. The hold was a good one, and the kick is good. This game is tied at 45 with 38 seconds to go. <laughs> My goodness. I'd say those fans are getting their money's worth here tonight. And then some. Josh Harper with the pass interference didn't matter. Derek Carr's big night continues. How many, times, how many times did he throw in the ball tonight? 73 attempts, 52 <laughs> completions, four <laughs> touchdowns. My arm would fall off if I threw 73 passes. Those guys' arms may be about to fall off. I don't think so. They're they're so fired up right now and got adrenaline and so excited they could play for another three hours or at least another quarter. <laughs> We're going to test it. Look at the scoreboard totals. And really on both sides, we've had a huge offensive game. We're right up against a thousand yards of total offense, just short of it. And if Rutgers gets a couple first downs, we'll vault right past a thousand total yards and then we may well have overtime and these were actually two pretty good defensive teams last year I mean, one the best defense in its conference in Rutgers and and certainly nationally ranked well the secondary took so many losses Rutgers secondary the return man Janarian Grant who's had a hundred yard kickoff return for a touchdown Jeremy Deering also a very dangerous returner but I'm not sure Fresno State's going to give him a chance. I would doubt that. I don't think they will either. But the trouble is getting the pooch kick. You get the ball at the 30-yard line. That's a pretty good field position. That's a kickoff very deep. So booming it toward the end zone. But Rutgers decides to take a knee. So that worked out well for Fresno State. And now we'll see how aggressive the Scarlet Knights are here. They have one timeout left. They're playing on the road. We'll see. They have to get a couple. Well, they've got to go a minimum of what 50 yards. I mean, something to get down in field goal range. So starting at the 20. Yeah, they've had plenty of big plays in this game, so they need one here, but they've had a lot of them. James on the ground. Carew's been the big play man in the past game. They have Brandon Coleman, one of the best receivers in college football. Going for 25. Excuse me. 
So they start at the 25. Nova pressured, steps up, throws short middle. Good catch, and right at the first down mark. That will stop the clock. Carew back in the game, and he continues his big night. Still got a ways to go. That's a great play because it stopped the clock, but every single one has to be that way. Nova now throws down. Bill, and he's got his man caught in Fresno State territory. Out of bounds, Brandon Ooh. Coleman with the big play. And Rutgers now moving closer to field goal range. 21 yards for the start of the night. It's a completed pass for first down. One more completion like that, they will be in field goal range. 22 seconds to go in this one. 45-45. Nova in the pocket, scrambling, throws middle, and it's dropped. Dropped by Brandon Coleman. That would have been field goal range. It's second and ten. He would have been able to keep running on that one, in all honesty, for quite a bit of yardage. Great job by Gary Nova. Tremendous job. Unbelievably wide open and separated from his man. Here we go down the field. And that one is caught inside the 30. And they have a timeout if they need it. Rutgers running down to the line of scrimmage. We'll see how they play this one. They might just spike the ball. They can use their they, timeout. They can run it, try to get three or four yards and center the ball. Clock is moving. The head coach over there, he'll call the timeout. And now Rutgers will set up for a field goal. They're in the final timeout. Rutgers. They could the win the game. Timeout. So we've got tremendous drama in Fresno. We'll be back for what could be the game winning kick. Uh, here we go, 45-45. Three seconds to go, 43-yard field goal attempt for the sophomore Kyle Federico trying to win the game for Rutgers. Remember, Fresno State has three timeouts. They can call them all to ice the kicker if they want. We'll see if they decide to do it. Federico, three for three, kicking field goals in this one, and now they burn at least one of those timeouts. See if they can't get in ahead of the sophomore shot, Federico. Fresno State. Remarkable game. More than a thousand combined yards of total offense. The career long for Kyle Federico, 52 yards. Rutgers got the ball back, Mike, at the 25 after the touchback with 38 seconds to go and just have gone straight down the field to set up a potential game winning kick. Gary Nova did a tremendous job in that drive. His accuracy, his choice, his ability to move in the pocket to buy time. In fact, the only pass that was incomplete was dropped. So the reality is he did a tremendous job. And may in that last, I mean, it's hard to pick a quarterback here because they both have played exceptionally well. I would guess he's going to call another timeout and then play with him on the last one if need be. Well, we'll find out. 43-yard attempt trying to win the game. Federico gets ready. The snap, the hole, the kick on the way, and it is no good. Wide right, and this game will go to overtime. Tough, really tough. You know, you assume that if you're in a regular range that you're going to make that kick. 43 yards. <laughs> go right. Go right, young man. Go right. Okay. I guess it's only fitting that these two teams get to battle some more. That many yards and that many lead changes. Well, what time is it? <laughs> this one approaching midnight now here in California. So Rutgers time. I mean, these kids came out a couple days early, but the Scarlet Knights from New Jersey are playing into the middle of the night here in Fresno. So we'll take a break and get you set up for overtime. A wild one at Bulldog Stadium, 45-45. Potential game-winning field goal for Rutgers goes wide right. Coach DeRuder, yeah, we live to see overtime. Fresno State 45, Rutgers 45. Partner, you enjoying this one? I'm loving it. Get that ball out of here. That ball cannot go through. Neither one of these teams deserve to lose right now. We're going to find out who wants to win it more. But I guarantee you, the Rutgers coaches are telling their kids, it's a long ride home. Let's make it a happy one. We got a chance. We got to come back now. We had some heartbreak on our side. We, we have played our tails off tonight. And the same thing, Coach of Fresno State is saying the same exact thing. We both deserve to win, but there's only one winner. 
Let's find out. Who Eight is. lead changes, better than a thousand total yards. Plus, we get the overtime format now. So who knows what numbers we might pile up between right. Fresno State and Rutgers? This game could just keep going on and on. This is a defensive coach's nightmare right here. Just move down the field like that. But the offensive coaches are feeling pretty good. They'll feel a lot better when one of them can win the game. And there is some strategy involved in overtime. Yeah. It, Partially, at least, involves the, the toss. Who wins the toss? Who loses? And that can impact. So we're going to get the toss here at midfield. Rutgers, your choice. Heads is called. Remember, you would prefer to go on defense first. We like to be on defense first. Switch into the field. Head into the field. Okay, turn you back that way. So, Rutgers has won the toss, elected to be defense first, first and 10, Fresno State. So, the teams get set up for overtime. Let's go back down once again to Lewis Johnson. Well, I'm just walking behind the Fresno State bench, and you know, it's an interesting mix of emotions here, what I'm seeing. I, I see relief on the face of some of these players on that missed field goal, but then there's, there's just plain fatigue. These guys are worn out down here. Coaches and trainers trying to hydrate them. If my clock is right, guys, we're looking at, what, four and a half hours since this game started? And not done yet, Lewis. And not done yet. <laughs> I mean, there has to be fatigue. There has to be physical fatigue, mental fatigue. Right. It's the first game of the year. There's all of that. And now is when you need some of your real leaders, your veteran players who don't feel any kind of physical pain that can overcome that can make a play that will ignite the rest of the team to finish out this overtime. So again, as Mike just detailed, Rutgers wins the toss. You want to play defense. The reason is it's normal football from the 25. You can get a first down as many plays as it takes you in the normal scheme of things starting at the 25. But if you're the defense, you know exactly what you have to do when you get the ball, when you get your chance. It can affect your play calling if they have scored no points a field goal or a touchdown. But Derek Carr back on the field and happy to have another chance. He'll lob one over the top. He's got his man. One play. End zone touchdown. Greg Watson. That's They do a lot of different things off of their sprint out package. And they snuck a receiver right down the middle of the field across the grain. And he found him a great job by Derek Carr. Sprint outside over the top and then perfectly thrown ball. Coach Flood's not very happy, but it, what it does is just tell them that now Rutgers, after this extra point, is probably looking at having to score a touchdown, an extra point in their overtime period. So they're going to kick the ball here, go for the extra point. The hold, the snap was a little low that time, but the kick from McGuire is up and good, and Rutgers does know exactly what they need to do. They need a touchdown and one to tie. You can see from ground level, great job. Just perfect touch over the top. Great job by the receiver sneaking through, but great pass on the run for Derek Carr. And what we wouldn't expect any less. Now, the way overtime works in college football also, you can go double overtime and the team still have a choice to kick the extra point or go for the two-point conversion. Once you get to triple overtime, and who knows where we're going here tonight in Fresno, but once you get to triple overtime, the teams are forced. You cannot kick. You have to go for two. Correct which you, you try to prepare a couple of two-point plays for every game, one in case you need in regulation, and then obviously if you get to overtime, you get to that third overtime. So no field goal possibility. Rutgers gets the ball. One chance with their four downs, starting for the 25, Gary Nova. And he's had a heck of a night, the Rutgers quarterback. Can the Bulldogs get a stop and get a win in overtime? Nova sets up a screen play, and that one was read well. And remember, as you said, they can get first downs. They're looking at, you know, second and ten now. So they just got to whittle away a little bit. They can choose to go for the big play, which has been their modus operandi all night long. Coleman with the catch, Jennings with the tackle, second and ten. Nova looking downfield, middle, caught inside the ten, down to the five. First down, Rutgers, first and goal. First and goal at the four or so. Must score test them, but got four shots at it, at least barring penalty. Ruan Peel with the catch. The redshirt freshman making his college debut tonight. Nova, slant, caught, 
Touchdown. So now Rutgers, they could decide to go for two and try to win the game. They could. That is their option. Brandon Looks Coleman. Like they might be keeping the offense on the field. So that would give us the ultimate drama. Every team gets one timeout in each overtime period, and it looks like Rutgers is going for the win. So this game is going to end here one way or another. No need for the headset. Coach can just watch. And they put the ball on the left hash, so it's probably some type they're going to use the right side of the field. If they're going to move in any direction, it'll probably be that way. What a night. And here we go. This is the game. Double covering on the outside. And in motion. Nova rolling right. End zone. Incomplete. The Bulldogs celebrate 52 51 in overtime. I guess it had to end at some point. It's a shame. That's, that's a great victory for Fresno State at home and a tough loss. Four Rutgers on the road, having to travel back that way, having the game in hand with an opportunity to end it in regulation and not getting it done. A very, very gutsy call for the second-year head coach, Kyle Flood. He went for the win, but he gets the loss. And a very warm hug and a handshake with DeRuiter and Flood. That's two guys with a lot of respect for each other that both deserve it because they have done a great job in their first year and obviously have teams that are very young but uh, put on a heck of a show tonight. Just that close to a Rutgers victory and when the ball dropped the Bulldogs celebrated. A wild wild game and look at the players out there congratulating each other on a game that was played. That's a neat thing to see in this day and age. Jim DeRuiter, victorious head coach, down on the field with Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks very much. Well, Coach, describe the missed field goal and then the play that you called that scored the touchdown that ultimately led to this win. Well, we got lucky down there. You know, we got a great push from our line. We were, a lot of guys were praying on that sideline. And, uh, you know, he just barely pushed the thing wide, get a chance going overtime. Coach Ram dialed up. We saw him in a, in a, in a zero deep, and Greg Watson beat, beat his man inside, and D.C. put it on him. You look like you've just run a marathon. What's it like <laughs> to win your first game with all the ups uh, and downs, the roller coaster that we just witnessed? Uh, th th this is a special <laughs> group of guys, and uh, I'll tell you what, give all the credit to Rutgers. Those guys battled. Both guys were up, down. Coach Flood does a great job to, to get this win. It's huge for our guys. Describe this record night that Derek Carr had for you. I, I don't know what to say about the guy. Everything he does is what you want in a quarterback. He leads us, does a fantastic job. I'm so happy for him and his family. And the Bulldogs. And, and when you leave the field tonight and you go to that locker room, how will the emotion of this win fuel the rest of this season? Well, it's going to be huge. We're going to be singing Bulldog spirit in the locker room and having a good time with it. We honored Coach Sweeney. We're going to honor him in the locker room. All right, Coach. Finish the marathon in the locker room. Congratulations I and appreciate thanks. It. Thanks, Lewis. Appreciate All right, Dave. <laughs> Well, great job by Coach and Mike, uh, Derek Carr, almost as his coach was talking about him, demonstrating that leadership, what a night it was for him, and a moment there between Coach Flood and Derek Carr. This was a heck of a night. This was a great game, and, and two guys with unbelievable will to win. Both he and Gary Nova did just about everything they could to rally their teams, and a great support. I mean, just just a fun game to watch, a fun game to do, and two coaches who now that I know them, I respect them for what they've got out of their kids. Are we glad the college football season is going now? Uh, I'm loving that it's on, and I'll tell you, games like this make me want to come back again. Well, now you can watch Ole Miss Vanderbilt coming up next and judge which one was wilder. The Bulldogs in overtime, a tremendous win for Mike Bellotti and Lewis Johnson. Dave Fleming from Bulldog Stadium saying good night from Fresno.